You are now entering the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends. Congratulations! Hi, my name is Mark, and your side quest is over! That's right, your mission has been completed. You found this podcast. Whether you rolled that D20 or you did that whole up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, black, start, whatever combination Konami code that was. I can't remember. I'm old. Leave me alone. Anyway... You're probably listening to this on a mobile device. iOS, Android, <laughs> Windows. <laughs> but did you also know that you can find this show along with so many others like it? Although admittedly there are no shows quite like this one. Believe me, I know. I've looked. But you can always find the latest episode of this show at Tangibound Network. Go to tangiboundnetwork.com, look it up. Check it out. Listen from the site. It's even mobile friendly. How awesome is that? Go check it out. Tangeaboutnetwork.com. All right. Oh. It's about comic books, movies, growing up with Rokusuki. Superman before Zack Snyder ruined him. Man, that's Michael Keaton was the best Batman while Christian Bale was just dead pen. No one remembers the other ones. Princess Leia in bikinis oh, yeah. and transforming Lamborghinis. Hell yeah. Please don't let child of proof ever act again. Please God no. Remembering tales from the crypt I back do. when Michael Bay wrote good scripts. He wrote scripts. All right here is old mystery. Cause it's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 83. I'm Jason. I am Jeff. I'm Blake. And uh, we are recording a day early on Monday because uh, we had some, Blake had some family stuff, and then uh, Jeff has a Reds game. We couldn't do it on Wednesday. And I, had, I have something going on Wednesday night, and then Thursday is the Fantastic Four, so... So we're doing it on Monday. That's is what right. You're everybody. That's how dedicated and flexible we are. Yes, this came together in what four hours. So this is the first time I think I've ever been described as flexible. And last time, probably. Yeah, last time. We are. We gotta be. We have to remain true to get our product out there this week, so that the yes. people in Ghana that's relying on us to listen and download us this week will be able to do so. And Germany. Germany's and Germany. a big, big one. So and, and our three listeners in Idaho. We got four, I think. I think we got four. He knows one of them. El Hino. El Hino. Angelo's awesome podcast. Uh, okay, uh, so we were at Gen Con. Gen Con. Yay. Yay. In Indianapolis. The warm embrace of Indiana. Yes. Crossroads of America. Thank you, Gen Con, for uh, giving us press passes, letting us there. That's awesome. That was great. Yes. And we got free Coca-Cola in the <laughs> press room. We did. We had a nice press room, free Wi-Fi. It's awesome. Free Wi-Fi, couches, yeah. and uh, I think those are called chairs. They were just chairs. Oh yeah, there were chairs. Uh, <laughs> but there were plugs you can plug into. Yes, recharge your uh, devices. I was a little worried because when we were in the uh, media room on Saturday, Jeff and I, it was like four thirty yeah. in the afternoon, and we I had to charge up my phone, and we were just trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, there was a woman who was sitting behind the chairs, laying down, and she looked like she was sleeping. And then she tapped the back of me and then asked me, is it Saturday? <laughs> I, I don't know what to do after that. I, 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 yes. Did she offer you free sex, too? No. <laughs> and I'm like, that would have been awesome. Yeah. You're in the media room, so you obviously have some credentials. What are you doing? <laughs> She'd been smoking way too much pot and she dropped th- too much she, acid at Gen Con. She thought she fell asleep on Saturday and woke up on Sunday. She's not ruffled stilt skin. <laughs> yeah. Is that Rumpelstiltskin? That's not Rumpelstiltskin. No. Rip Van Winkle? (laughs) Snow White? (laughs) Rip Van Winkle. (laughs) He said it's Gen Con 2016. (laughs) You slept an entire year. (laughs) Oh, God. Rumpelstiltskin, who was the... Oh, he was the flea slate guy. No, no, no. Yeah, he was the guy that was going after the flea... The the string, the thread. Gold. Gold. 
the yes. gold thread. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the sewing machine. They both start with R's. You said golden fleece. I thought you were talking about Hercules. I'm like, you're getting your shit mixed with No, Jason and the Argonauts. Off. That's who I was talking about. Oh, Jason Argonauts. Yes. Oh, okay. Which was a really horrible t- movie. Have no, it wasn't. Are you talking about the remake or the original? The original. The original with the stop animation? With the, 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 uh, That's the same guy name? that did King Kong. Uh, time I was thinking 1970s. Yeah. Is that the remake? No, that's the original. Oh, the original I thought was from the 40s. No, the original is from like the 50s or 70s or something. 50s or, two 50s or 70s or <laughs> yeah, you know. something. But no, they they, they they did, they remade Jason the Argonauts, what, here? Just recently, a couple years ago. Did they? Right. I didn't know that. Oh. Yes. Yes. Give me the facts. <laughs> well, yeah, it looks like uh, 1963... And yes. 2000. A 2000 starring Jason London and Frank Langella. So it's got to be good if Jason London's in it. Yeah, so basically I'm right. I said 50 to 70s, and it was 63, <laughs> so I was right there. And I said a few years ago, it was in 2000 miniseries, so that was 15 years ago. So I'm right. I'm spot on. Spot on. <laughs> decades. I'm only off by decades. Wait a minute. <laughs> so how many did they make? Two? Well, two popped up on IMDb when I Was the second one? Second one was 2000, and apparently it's a mini series. Oh, on what channel? Anyone know? That one channel that, okay. that played it. <laughs> uh, okay, so besides Jason and the Argonauts. I could have sworn there was like a black and white one at some point. I just thought there was a cheesy 1970s one that I always saw up at the local video store when no, I was younger. You're thinking of the 1963 really? Jason and the Argonauts stop motion because I believe the same animator. That did King Kong, did Jason and the Argonauts in the Sinbad series and all King those. Kong from the 20s? Or his son, or something like that. <laughs> oh, it like Harry Howlin or something? You know me, just give me 50 years. Come on, man. Water, give or take. I'll still be right. <laughs> and we are the podcast that can't count. That's right. So anyways, Gen Con. Gen Con, yeah, we oh, digress. Yeah, that's where Gen we were. Gen Con. Uh, so you guys went up on Friday. Initial feedback, yes. I went up on Saturday. Yes. And uh, had a great time. Second year I did it. Many times for you guys, hasn't it? It's only been my second year. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Blake, it's, you've uh, gone up there many times, right? Eight straight years in a row now, I believe, yeah. Anything you guys want to talk about with it? It's Any? getting bigger still. Yes. And bigger. Did you feel... And bigger. Did you feel... And bigger. Crowded, though. Like my penis. What? <laughs> no, anyways. Yeah, uh, I did not feel like it was, like, packed. Though I mean, it was a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. I think they probably had record crowds again. But it felt like since it was so big throughout the convention center, like the whole area, there's different rooms for Dungeons and Dragons, you know, all that stuff. I didn't feel like I, there was a couple aisles Jeff and I went you, down that we felt oh claustrophobic. Yeah, walking yeah. down the main uh, you exhibition know, hall. What you what you need to do is walk out to the adjacent hotels and get a feel for how many people are just spilled out all over the place into the hallways there. I, I immediately recognize it as a lot of people. But, okay. you know, and that's just because I've been going there for the past eight years or 20. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I even told Jeff on Friday, I said, uh, this is already bigger than last year. It's mm-hmm. going to break the attendance record again. And I guess they did for the sixth straight year. And I could tell just because of the size of the, uh, the vendor exhibit, you know, mm-hmm. when they actually sell stuff or you can buy – they had this year over 400 vendors uh, crammed in there, and I can immediately tell there are more vendors this year, and a lot more people. And parking sucked for that day because we we're competing with One Direction boy band. Oh, is that why? Bastards. See, I got down there early Saturday, and I didn't have any trouble with parking. <clears throat> but I know last year when Jeff and I went up on a Friday, we, yeah. it was it was a little bit packed to find parking. Yes. It was a little earlier this year, so as not to coincide with the Indianapolis Colts preseason game. Mm-hmm. But we did get to drink beer outside of the Sun King Beer Garden and watch all the Mills and their daughters walk by going to the One Direction concert. Oh, yes. Did you go to One Direction? Uh, he went One Direction, went all one. right. Oh, oh, oh. oh, like you didn't expect that. That's a joke. To my wife, that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> and we got to see uh, 40 Going On 14, the podcast guys. You know what was really awesome about that? Uh, they are the guys that do the instant game show, mm-hmm. which is a uh, traveling instant game show at the convention. Actually, They, they act- just pop up anywhere. They, they turn the pop convention, up anywhere and give away prizes. Show. Yeah, they're giving away four-day passes for next year's Gen Con. Yes. And what's pretty funny is that all these years, I've seen them every year, and i watched them. And uh, 
this year I sat there and I watched them and I'm like, you know, I've been watching these guys for the past eight number of years. Now I actually know who they are. Mm-hmm. They're 40 going on 14. Some of the nicest guys I've met yeah. in a long time. Yeah, we, you know? yeah, we <laughs> I don't meet out. a lot of nice people, especially in my field. Uh, so, no. Yeah, we hung out and had a beer with them after one of their shows there mm-hmm. when they got some time. They're pretty busy guys. Yeah. So, uh, if you have not checked out 40 Going On 14, the podcast, check them out. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it was great seeing them, finally meeting them after listening to them for about a year and a half now. So, um, any games that stood out? Did you play Axis and Allies, Blake? I always play Axis and Allies uh, at Gen Con on Saturday afternoons. And I learned that there's no reason to actually try and schedule a uh, non-tournament game and go pay, go play. All you do is you just show up at the Axis and Allies headquarters and bother the guy that's miserable there running the whole thing because he gets frustrated because of all the games that are out that start missing pieces. <laughs> and you just tell him, like, hey, man, uh, can I just uh, find a pickup game for anything? You know, because there's so many versions of it mm. out now. And he's like, uh, yeah, check back at 2 o'clock. And so sure enough, we check back at 2 o'clock and there's some guy waiting to play another game and say, hey, man, you want to play? Well, you want to play you know d-day version of axis and allies and we're like well we just wanted to do the regular second anniversary of world war ii and we got him to play and then some other people come by and like hey you want to play we're setting up and yeah okay next thing you do you just turn in your two dollar generic cards and you just do a pickup game right there at the a and a tournament axis and allies not to go too in depth but so it was you and your buddy that show, that played. Uh, me and my uh, buddy John and his son. Who his son was able his to play. Son okay, was able to play. We basically taught him how to play as we went. Oh, that's good. He's t- you know he's he's ten years old. He's he's about the right age to get uh, converted. Okay. And, now uh, it was his first Gen Con, and he's hooked. It, yeah. He, you know what? He did look like he was having fun. Yes, he so, was. Um, so you and your buddy and his son were you all on the same side? Is that how Axis or is yeah, everybody? Yeah, we were out. We were allies. We okay, so there's only allies. two sides: Axis and Axis and Axis. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would make sense. <laughs> no, you could be neutral uh, in Dora. I, I'm Switzerland, like. <laughs> or you could be neutral Spain and be Franco. You know, and just sit there and thumb your can nose you be, at everybody. Can you be Italy and switch sides? Ah, we were never following no, him. <laughs> Mongolia was neutral, apparently, because you can't go through Mongolia either. Oh, so, yeah. well, look at that. Never mind, that was a dumb question. So, yes. on. <laughs> but no, you, well, I thought Belgium was th- neutral, but they went <laughs> through Belgium. Well, yeah. They didn't have a choice. <laughs> At the point in time where you start, the Germans have already been through Belgium. Oh, so. okay. But there are so many variations of the game now. You can play with the French. You can go before the French surrender. With the French, Italians, as well as Chinese, etc., instead of them being "quote unquote" U.S. forces, the French surrender. No, no. Oh, no. Well, I mean, before they got you know conquered. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah they know, never surrender. So, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, now oh, there goes our last French listener. <laughs> uh, you know, uh-huh. or, both of them are gone. Both of them are gone. I prefer French ticklers yeah. instead. But I tell you, you know my. So moving on. You know, my, all right. Quick story time. You know my favorite Axis and Ally game? What's that? Uh, I actually played when uh, I was in Afghanistan with uh, our NATO allies and mm-hmm. ISIF uh, forces. And I found two Swedish guys that loved to play Axis and Allies and a German guy that loved to play, as well as a Norwegian guy that loved to play. And we went and we would sneak over to the European side because the American side of the camp sucked. The Europeans were like, your base sucks. We're bringing in croissants and, oh, and, oh, and sausages and cheeses, and we're going to have our own little lounge. And so, no Americans were allowed over there, but they said, you know, hey, uh, Edward, you're, you're, you're coming with us. I'm like, all right, cool. You're so an I, honorary I, European. I was an honorary European, you know. And we went over there, and the German guy was playing Germany and Japan, and me and the Swedes and the Norwegians were playing the Allies. <laughs> And the, and the other Germans and the other European officers would, would come in to get their espresso fucking coffee, believe it or not. They had espresso <laughs> set up in there, too. They would come in, and they would take a look, and it was the most unpolitically correct thing you would ever see because the German guy's playing Nazis, <laughs> and we're playing allies. I'm playing the U.S., the Swedes playing, the Swedes playing uh, uh, the U.K., and uh, the Norwegian guy, he's, he's playing um, uh, Russia, Russia, and the German guy's playing Germany and Japan. And people walk in, they, and they do it. First, they do a double take, 
at the game that they're playing and they're the German guys playing war. They're like, what are you guys doing? They're like, we're playing World War II. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do a double take and they look at me and they're like, oh, why are you silly American? Why are you allowed over here, you barbarian? You know, but... Uh, <laughs> the barbarian. <laughs> you know, so yeah, the barbarians were uh, inside the gates. <laughs> and so that was the funniest day. And we, every time somebody came in, they had to do double takes, and they'd walk out, and uh, the five of us would just start laughing. <laughs> it was funny. Did you the Germans win? No, we won. Oh, okay. And oh, that's, four against one. That's I right. hope you did. That's exactly as the Swedish naval commander said, as right as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> You really do a lot better impersonations than me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> a lot better accent than you can pull yeah. off, Jason. Oh, 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 Jesus Cranky, we're talking about Gen Con. I'm sorry, I digress. <laughs> well, we did play several games. Yeah, what games did you guys play? We played <laughs> WWE Superstars. Yes, and Jason did so well at that. It's a new game coming out based, obviously, on WWE wrestlers, where you get your decks of cards and your little wrestling figures, you put them in the ring, and then you use the cards for movement, and Jason lost in the first round. Both games. Both games. Both games. Jason lost in the first I round. I lost to the big show. Uh, I lost. I was Daniel Bryan the first time. And you lost to Randy Orton then. Yes. And then I became Randy Orton. And lost to the big show. Yes. So it was not a fun fun time. It was a good game. though. It's fun. The problem is I don't know if... Uh, my wife did say she would play the game with me, but she said she would mock me the whole time. <laughs> um, since I'm a huge wrestling fan. I liked it. Um, my issue was it was $50, which wasn't bad. But they can do, exp- and you get six figures, and you actually get the little toy figures, too. Yeah, that's, that's the problem, is I wasn't a fan of pretty much any of the wrestlers that were available in the... Yeah, it was Roman Reigns, John Cena, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Big Show, and Big E. Like, why the hell is Big E here? <laughs> Diversity. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Put someone else in. Put Kofi. Give me Kofi. But anyways, um, it was a fun game. Well, they wanted the larger guys, the yeah. heavyweights. It was a fun game. Uh, they said they are doing expansion packs. Um, I don't know how much we can talk about, but, the, you know, possibly Legends and all the other stuff. But my issue was that um, it was $30 for expansion packs, and I don't know if I really keep wanting to spend $30 on each expansion pack to get a Legend or something else. Uh, it was neat, but I kind of like my video game better, so uh, I'm going with that. Uh, we played, I, or we saw I Know, the trivia game. Yeah, yeah, we got a little quick demo on how it works. And- I wasn't too impressed. I wasn't too big fan. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those games that people who aren't great trivia players have a chance, you know, against playing against people who do know a lot of trivia. Mm-hmm. So they asked a lot of uh, Katy Perry questions. Mm, don't know. We only really yes. got <laughs> Blake Lively. <laughs> <laughs> Katy Perry kissed a girl. Good ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> That's Jack. not at all how the game J- goes. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you like the color blue. Wrong! Oh, Green! Uh, but Jeff bet against me, so oh, he wins. So he wins. <laughs> um, we played Mega Monster City Smash. Oh, was that? that? Was that the little one oh, where the little, oh, little monsters were zipping around? Yes. It's a kitty game. Yes. Well, he was looking for games for his kid. I, I was looking at was my son. I looked at that and I said, that is awesome for little kids. That is, cause it was kind of boring. Uh, because I think the remotes were de- dying. Oh, the batteries yeah. died. <laughs> the batteries died. Exactly. Jeff and I kept going in circles. Then we wouldn't move. You got these joysticks and you move up and down, little remotes. One was an yeah, ape, one's a little, lizard. You move your little three-inch monsters mm-hmm. around a, a game board where you set up little plastic buildings that are made out of collapsible blocks. Yes. yes. And the object is to knock more block, more t- cities down. Yeah, you try to knock the other guy's not, blocks. The other guy. You don't yeah. even take charge. You just go. Guy, yeah. It's whoever goes. <laughs> uh, it was fun, but I mean, I wouldn't buy it. It was enjoyable. Uh, the Hare and the Tortoise. Hare and the Tortoise is a good game. I bought it. Did you? Yes, I bought it on Amazon. Got it online. Right. Yeah, awesome. it was che- it was cheaper to buy on Amazon than it was to buy at, at the Gen Con. Gen- I would have bought it at Gen Con because they had some Gen Con exclusives. But they ran out. But they ran out. So yeah. I said, well, I'll just go online. I got free shipping, so it was no issue. But Heron Tours basically had a rabbit, a fox, a turtle, a lamb. And a wolf. Yes. And basically you bet you get two cards. You pick which one you want to bet that you're going to think win. Oh, so you're teaching kids to gamble. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kids need to know how to gamble early. All right. Pete Rose. It never Pete Rose. Never Pete heard Rose. Pete Rose. Rose. Sponsored this game. <laughs> I mean, okay, go ahead. Uh, and then you also get another set of cards, and then you get to pick who your secondary bet is. And basically, well, you're assigned your first, and yes. then you get oh, to pick your right. secondary. Oh, that's right. You're assigned. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
but then basically, like, if all of three of us were playing, we put a lamb cart down. <clears throat> yeah. two, two lambs, and Jeff puts, I don't know, a turtle. And you look at the cards, and based on how many cards are thrown down for each character, that's how much they move. I see. Uh, but each one has a special thing, like the lamb has to stop at every water, every creek that goes through the board, uh, take a drink. The rabbit can't move. If you throw cards down for the rabbit, he can't move if he's winning because he decides to take a nap. If the hare's in the lead, no matter how many cards are played for him, he won't move if he's in the lead. Uh If the wolf, uh, if somebody throws a wolf howling card, he's got to he's got to stop at every red red riding hood and eat them. No, oh okay. (laughs) He howls and all the characters stop and he can move. Okay, so that was kind of cool. He prevents the other characters from moving that round if you play a wolf howl card. And first place gets five, second gets place four and three or something like that. Five, what about the tortoise? the tortoise? The uh, tortoise. The tortoise will move no matter what. The tortoise gets to move. He, he'll move one space no matter. Even what. if zero cards are thrown, and there's something else with the turtle, I forget what. Uh, I think it was like if he had four cards, he might move two spaces. Yeah, and then, but then he won't move if the wolf howls. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's a fun game. It's a fun but when game. You move it's the good turtle, for... you still have to go. Yep. They had to talk like yeah. a rabbit. I got this. I don't have to talk run. Like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. up, Doc? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> but it was a fun game, so I bought that online. Uh, Friday the 13th was a card game uh-huh. uh, oh, yeah, with yeah. kitty cats. It was, it was a kid, more kids oriented. I was looking for kids oriented games for my son. Oh, so um, it wasn't a Jason. No, it was not gamer. a <laughs> That would be fun. A Jason Warriors no, card no. game for kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. It was. Yeah, the, there were different unlucky suits or whatever and you were trying to not take points and it was an interesting little game they were sold out so couldn't uh, we played I bought Love Letter Batman yeah, it's a variation of Love Letter have you ever played Love Letter no it's a pretty quick card game I, I, actually Blake you have played the uh, Munchkin version called oh Blue I have yeah. yes. oh we did I got that the, one night we did that one oh, night oh okay <laughs> I got the Batman version you got the Batman version and Jeff is it like Batman writing love letters to Batgirl? To Robin. <laughs> or Robin. <laughs> hey, you never know these days. I love those leggings, Not Robin. that there's anything wrong with that. No, no, no. 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 Uh, so, yeah, I lost in that to Jeff because he kept guessing what was in my hand. And then we got home, and I, after my kids went to bed, my wife's like, oh, I'll play. I, I want to play this game. She's pretty open with these board games. And there's a card game. And she kept getting three in a row of, um, who was it? Uh, who gets to guess? Batman. Batman gets to guess what you, what's in your hand if you want to use that card. And she guessed correctly three straight times. I lost her seven to nothing. Uh, so, so she knows you pretty well. I guess. I don't even look at my card. I kept it face down. She's like, I bet you it's him. Damn it, it's two face. I'm out. Damn it. Uh, and then we played Evolution. Evolution. Uh, that was an incredibly fun game. I really enjoyed that. It was I, one I remember seeing kickstarted last year and wasn't sure about, so I didn't back it. Also, I had too much money invested in other things. Uh, but now that we got to play it, I, I actually really enjoyed it. It's very, um, I don't want to say complex. It is complex. It, it, it's yeah more complex than most games I play with you. Uh, I did like it. I liked it a lot. Yeah, well, what it is is you are a... Uh, you, you're a... Uh, it's the beginning of like new species, and your your species are evolving, and so you're trying to you know collect more points through whatever. And then, as Jason likes to do, his species became carnivores, so he can eat other people's species. We're playing with two mm. women that we so didn't it's, know. It's not a game for vegans. No. Okay. Uh, or passiveness. Well, well you could you, be because you could be a herbivore, too. Yes, yeah, so all my That's species were herbivores. Mm. So we're playing with these two women, and um, they didn't know us. And they found out soon that I just kill everybody just because I want to screw everybody up. So I became a carnivore and started eating their species along with Jeff's species. And they were so concerned about, you know, protecting themselves. Like, you know, oh, Brigger's going to kill, you know, eat them. I came in last. Uh, (laughs) But I did did destroy the most species. Indigestion. Yes. They did get a... Beer koozies, though, from us. Cup koozies. I oh, did gave we, out, handed out some koozies? Yeah, we gave them some koozies because they were good sports. So. Oh, that's good. We played, what, 45 minutes? It was a pretty good game. It's a longer game, so. Uh, but you build up your species, population, body size. Uh, you have a lot of different cards that can do stuff, like your carnivore can become a climber. So is this a game yeah. for intelligent design? It is. 
Okay, just wondering. It is Back, actually, did anybody no, start protesting evolving. it while you were there? I was it, wondering. It, it, you're actually evolving. You're not intelligently designing it. Oh, so, oh, that, I guess so, so yeah. Darwin, it's, so it's, it's Darwinian. It, yeah. It's called evolution. Yeah, I guess so, that yeah. would make sense. But you were designing things. That's true. That is true. Well, I'm so <laughs> confused. No, actually, the character creatures are evolving. When Jason starts eating yeah. you, then all of a sudden you, you use d- the trade you card. Evolve you evolve defenses, right? That it was a lot neat. going on. Actually, it sounds like you're learning about evolution and Darwin Darwinism mm-hmm. without really knowing it. You are. Well, it, it was a lot of stuff going on, and I liked how only every species only could have three cards on it. I like that. Yeah, you kept trying to put four or five. I know, I kept forgetting. <laughs> but then the problem is, like, you had a lot, like, you know, one card would protect the other species and all that stuff, protect the species, yeah, which was symbio- fine. Symbiosis relationships amongst species. You could make your one species a scavenger, so when your carnivore ate, mm-hmm. the scavenger ate with you. So you'd have, the basic goal is you got to keep feeding these guys to yeah. survive. And once the food runs out in the watering hole, you're gone. There you go. Uh, the game's over. But... I liked it, and then the trainer, the t- person teaching, she goes, "Yeah, we just added the flying element too." It's like, like oh great, I need another yeah. fucking thing oh. added to this. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned these rules, <laughs> so she's like, you "That's don't a new- have to play with the expansions right away." I probably wouldn't want to, <laughs> but I, I liked it. It just, I don't know. I, you would have to have the right people to play it. Yeah, that is true, mm-hmm. and, um, and it, 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 it's one of the more more complex, more confusing games. Than what we would normally play. But so. if you ever got and you had the right people to do it, I would yeah. do it. I would play again. I really liked it. So, well, that's cool. What what else? Any other games? Uh, I did buy a kids game. Um, what was it? The log jumping game. Yeah, I, forgot I can't what it was remember called. what it's called. It was like some, something like Frogger. Something. It was, yeah, it was actually kind of designed off of video Frogger. game Frogger. You have a big board. Yeah. And my son loves it. He hasn't stopped playing it. Awesome. Um, but you have five logs. You said back in my day, I played that on. Videos. <laughs> and he's like, Dad, <laughs> on a board game. What? Wait, what? <laughs> he's like, Dad, we have a Mario Kart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not playing Frogger. Um, yeah. But you have five logs, and you roll two dice. One's for the logs. You have to move them down the river. Mm-hmm. And you have coins on the other side, and you have to get your explorers across. And uh, But the logs always have to be at least one touching. Like, they all have to have one part of their logs touching. They have touching. to be bundled. Yes. But it's really fun, and... Uh, he's liked it a lot. And like I said, he hasn't stopped playing. He even has been playing by himself if we're like cleaning up after dinner and that he starts playing. So awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'll find out next week who makes it. it I just forgot to write it down. Um, uh, nice. But then, like I said, those were the games. Or you could post it on the, when you post it. I could. Episode. I will do that. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, before I didn't, uh, you got there, mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Something. I was just going to say, before you got there, Jason, I did uh, play one game called, I think it was The Village Crone. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing of that was you are... Uh, competing witches in this old village and you're casting spells trying to, you, you got hidden <clears throat> agendas that you're trying to get with the villagers and, and your little familiars running out the one stuff so there'd be somebody who controls the bats and someone controls the snakes or the rats or things like that and then you have to say these spells whenever you wanted to throw a spell on something to try to get your uh, agendas accomplished they were real sticklers on you have to say the spell or it will not work. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that won't go over good in any game group I play in. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? It was fun to play. It was fun. Now, if uh, do you lose by getting uh, burned at the stake? Uh, since everyone else is witches, they're not burning at the stake. What yeah. burns? More witches! <laughs> <laughs> what floats? Small churches? <laughs> Tiny Apples? <rocks. laughs> Tiny rocks. <laughs> Um, and you know what? It, Gen Con, it's in Indy every year. Uh, they may be moving. Who knows? But uh, they, I've never had, and I've only been there two years, but there's a lot of people. I've never seen any issues with people. Everybody's friendly. Everybody's nice. I really yeah. don't see any. It is a warm, accepting atmosphere for everybody. I mean, you have a lot of people, you have a lot of booths that have the miniature games that people are playing. Yeah. And you just show up and they demo games. Uh, obviously yeah. they want you to buy it, but it's all demo. You don't have to. Um, there's a lot of miniatures there, which I'm not into because it just seems way too complicated mm-hmm. for me. Uh, a lot of money. Um, but, I mean, you have miniatures. You have uh, the Dungeons & Dragons, the Pathfinder crowd. You have the guys doing WWE Superstars. You have the card games. You, you even got lesser-known RPGs going on there as well. Yeah, and yeah. you got lots of uh, dice games, which I get intimidated by dice games. Yeah, yeah. Jason says there's more than two dice he's doesn't want to play. Yeah, it. huge Pokemon tournaments. Is there a Pokemon? I never oh, saw yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, well, well, is that why you're 
gathering. Is that why your friend's son was? Yeah, liked it? Well, okay. yeah. He, well, yeah. He liked his Lego thing too. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we mainly stuck to the uh, exhibition hall, and all those other rooms will have tournaments going on. Mm. And we really didn't go into any of those. Yeah, n- normally I do uh, a number of RPG sessions, but uh, because my one buddy had trouble committing this year, we, we didn't sign up for him. And I was going to go to a bunch of seminars, but I didn't end up going to any of those because I thought about it. It's like, man, I don't need to do that. And uh, there were a couple opportunities to go see, uh, you know, like uh, one of the authors of, um, you know, the Dragonlance was, you know, hosting his uh, breakdown on themes for writing. And they were going to break down Lord of the Rings, but they wanted 14 bucks to go in and watch them. I'm like, well, come on, man. I don't want to pay 14 bucks. I don't want to pay 14 bucks to talk about walking trees. Yeah. I, well, oh, yeah, so shut up. Got it. <laughs> But I did. I, I, I did get my annual access and allies in with my buddy, and uh, we did. I bought uh, from Albino Dragon. I bought. Uh, they are officially licensed bicycle card uh, artists. I actually bought four sets of cards of some wonderfully uh, artistic uh, uh, playing card sets. Um, hmm. So your regular playing card sets, except except they're graphics. With uh, I brought the Princess Bride themed one, the Goonies themed one. Uh, a fantasy kingdom theme and a dragon theme, but they also have other things like Alien, Ghostbusters, and they even got Breaking Bad as their newest release. So if you're a big fan of Breaking Bad, you can go online and order your deck of Breaking Bad playing cards. I think next year I'm going to uh, go up and stay Friday night. So yeah, I, I, th- I you know normally I do the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and putts around Sunday. But uh, I, I, for me, it had a little bit of a different feeling this year, uh, probably because I wasn't playing any mm-hmm. RPG game sessions, either the two- or four-hour sessions. And and uh, I, I have noticed that it seems like Wizard of the Coast Dungeons & Dragons is being slowly pushed to the side, because normally they're one of the co-sponsors to Gen Con, but this year the big sponsors were Mayfair and, mm-hmm. of course, their Paizo, you know, Pathfinder. And Pathfinder had their huge setup on the exhibition floor, as always. And I was really disappointed with D&D. I'll tell you, because there was no D&D booth in the exhibition hall. They didn't have their great stuff that they bring. They usually bring these great uh, uh, statues of, uh, you know, Drow Spiders or Drizzet or these uh, other, you know, uh, characters that they're known, famous for. And I even commented about it, you know, with Jeff and John. I even asked one of the the uh, knuckleheads running one of the uh, games at the table for D and D. I'm like, hey man, where's all their stuff? I'm like, oh no, man. <laughs> okay, thanks. And and you know, you couldn't buy any products there, nothing. And uh, I was really disappointed because the year before, they asked when they had the huge launch of uh, the new fifth edition to screw everybody to buying in rule books again. And, which you complained about last which year. Which I complained about <laughs> last year, too, and I'm complaining about them again this year. Well, you, I remember last year you complained about it because it seemed that they rushed them to have it ready for Gen Con. So this and year, then they didn't have everything and, set up. Yeah, and then this year they didn't have anything at all. They didn't have anything at all, and I'll tell you what's even worse. The news that came out today. Did you see the news coming out today Did about not. Dungeons & Dragons? Today, after Gen Con is over... Oh, oh first of all... Their computer game, Swords of the Coast, that's coming out this fall. Huge. Big deal. Not there. Nothing. Nothing. Not even to see there. No demos. No whatever. No promotion for it. Or what, and I wanted to see what it was going to look like. Nothing. Guess what? Gen Con. Nothing. D&D sponsored. Nothing. Nothing at all. And guess what comes out today? Right after Gen Con, your best... You know, I, you know yeah. the PR and marketing department for Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, Wizards... Dungeons and Dragons, they all ought to be fired. Because today they just announced Warner Brothers and Hasbro announced the Dungeons and Dragons film franchise. I did see that. I didn't they know. could have done this bullshit fucking Friday, Saturday, yeah. Friday night, a huge like hold here, we're going to whatever. But you know what? Maybe Pathfinder is pushing them out of Gen Con, which would be. It kind of looks that way. And it kind of looks that way, and it's kind of weird because this whole convention was started by Gary Guy Gass, yeah, the TSR yeah. Yeah. guys yeah, so back in Geneva, guys Wisconsin. Who, the guys who founded Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and TSR, and and yeah, now their company seems to be squeezed out of the convention that they created. Yeah, that's pretty weird. That's what happens when you screw up yep. big time. But anyways, uh, favorite day Saturday, costume day. 
Yes. Uh, you know, the parade and the uh, costume contest. Although it's acceptable and expected, if you want to dress up for all four days and run around, you can do that. I've seen a lot of the same people there, day, you know, for the couple days that we were there, wearing the same costume. Yeah. And I hope they washed it because, you know, they start to get smelly. I heard your favorite one was Star-Lord? Yes. I, you know, the first time... All right, there was a five foot six Chris Pratt, Pratt look like shorter than Chris Pratt. I want I would want, I would say like a midget Chris Pratt, but it, then I'm insulting the vertically challenged people. Mm-hmm. I don't want to upset you know I don't want to do any microaggressions against okay. people. Okay, according to the University of New Hampshire. But anyways, <laughs> so I so he's like a five foot six Chris Pratt, dead on. He had the hair, he had the stubble. He looked like him. He looked exactly he like did. little Chris Pratt. And he had the his outfit was dead on, and he uh, had his little speaker, which he uses yeah. a little microphone, and uh, he had the soundtrack, and he walked around playing it, and he did his little dance routines, he did everything, all that kind of stuff. And the first couple, first time I saw it, it was a great novelty, and he was having fun doing it all day. But by the time I saw him several times later, I got annoyed by the guy. <laughs> you wanted I, to push him? I just wanted to go push him down. I was like, stop it. <laughs> The one that annoyed me is there's a lot of great costumes uh, except for Aquaman. He he was looking a little rough. Uh, there was an Aquaman. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that we did, did not we look did like Aquaman. Aquaman. If you're if you're <laughs> overweight and you're wearing that full body fake tattoo body sock, yeah. Don't do it. No, 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 no. That was not good. <laughs> the bad hair. Bad <laughs> hair. Yeah, bad he, was hair. Tra- he was trying to be yeah, the new Jason Momoa look uh, Aquaman and uh-huh. It looked more like the you know, me if, if old look Aquaman. You, you might as well just, you know, go with the skin, use some magic marker, and do your little imprints on your skin or whatever the hell it is. Don't wear the weird ass body sock. No, I think the, the body sock would body sock with the fake tattoo, whatever. No, on it. that that would have been better than just being there with shirtless with marker on you. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. terrible. Hey, no, At least it shirtless. covers up all the hairy backs. Come speaking on. of shirtless, there was the uh, uh, the Spartan guy from 300 there. I did see around. that. Did you see him? <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't leave much to uh, the imagination. He was, uh, he was a man hunk of chiseled muscle. <laughs> did you just? Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you were a female, you would have loved that guy rocking around. And, of course, his girlfriend. I don't know what his girlfriend was. She was like rainbow hair, skin-tight outfit, whatever. I, who knows what the heck she was? She was like a rainbow or something. I have no clue. <laughs> rainbow bright, maybe. Rainbow bright. She could have been that. But that other guy, <laughs> that guy was, you know, some people look the part. He looked the part. Man hunk of chiseled muscle is going to be the name of our yeah, show. Man, that's right. <laughs> but then there was a guy that we keep seeing every day. We called him perverty Batman. Yeah. There was a Batman that was a little interesting. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was nicknamed Perverty Batman by uh, the 40 Going On 14 podcast. Yeah, they, 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 they were running their, their Insta game show. He was standing around watching their game show and making some comments. So when they called on him, he said, Pervy Batman, come on up here. I will say there's one thing. Uh, uh, wait a minute. RJ Holt 666. Not to go and listen to feedback tweeting. yet. Yeah, live tweeting. Most disturbing thing seen at Gen Con. Pervy Batman. Batman. Pervy Batman. Yes. <laughs> was, you know because, what? Because Pervy Batman was probably five foot five, and had a uh, probably a hippity hop stomach. You know those old hippity hop <laughs> shoes to be on. He it, was wearing the Batman outfit, full cape, cowl, everything. The black one. The yeah, black one. And, but he had probably the he, biggest he belly. He had a I've huge seen. gut for his frame. His gut really, really jutted was out. Huge. <laughs> And what was even funnier is he's wearing a backpack underneath his cape, which so made him look like a hunchback. <laughs> so he's like a perverty fat hunchback Batman. Uh, the weirdest thing I saw, creepiest thing, was um, somebody I knew that knows movies was picked by the Insta Game Show uh, to do these movie trivia. What's your point? And someone did not know. Did, did, did he win the round? Time out. He did not know <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson on a plane. What movie is that? Snakes on a motherfucking plane. <laughs> you know what? Somebody... He, didn't, he didn't say Samuel L. Jackson on a plane. What did he say? He <laughs> said something about Samuel L. Jackson takes flight with a specific type reptile. of reptile. Oh, my bad. Oh, my <laughs> God. Iguanas on a plane. My bad. 
<laughs> and oh, so who would this person be? That would be Jeffrey. <laughs> really? So did, 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 I, did I win? I'm not finished. Did I win? <laughs> so I'm then, not finished? So can I finish? He then throws a ball into the crowd. And this guy dressed as Walter goes, oh, I know that. No, oh, no, that went, was a on, different on. one altogether. That when you throw a, the ball in the crowd, that's like your uh, your lifeline. Your yes. lifeline. Yes. So the person that catches it calls for it is supposed to and, help you with the right answer. And he said, Con Air. Yeah, you're getting them completely confused. That was Waldo. the first time I Waldo. threw the ball. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Waldo gave the, 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 wrong the guy gave me the con. snakes on a plane answer right. He got the Fight Club answer that's wrong. right. That's right. Edward Norton and Brad Pitt on a pla- met on a plane, and he says Con Air. What the yeah. fuck? I mean, it's like I'm thinking, you know, I never I dressed as Waldo. And you should have said, when I find you, Waldo, I'm gonna I think, kick your ass. I think someone did say that. <laughs> <laughs> they gave Waldo grief for that one. So, because he was so adamant that he knew it. Yeah. So Jeff did not know snakes on a plane. He forgot. He went. I, he went flying. He did win though. I forgot. I did win. Yeah. So. Okay. So we did have a good time. I won a Gen Con koozie. That's right. So uh, next year, go to Gen Con with us. See us up there. Uh, we got listener feedback. We'll do uh, this episode is kind of you know Gen Con listener feedback. Who knows? We're just going to. We're just winging it, playing yeah. it by ear. Yeah. Jason didn't have enough time to prepare. And to, I to, really didn't care. At four hours, we're like four, five hours for that. Ah, let's just wing it. But you know, before we start the listener feedback, we do have to have a moment of silence. Oh yes. Oh yes. Roddy, Roddy Piper, Roddy, Roddy. Moment of silence. Okay. Poured a little bit out for you. Yep. I liked Roddy. He was always great. Not only was he out of chewing bubble gum, and he's not kicking ass anymore. Ronda Rousey, who uh, is known as the Rowdy One, Roddy Piper. She, Roddy mm-hmm. Piper gave. His blessing for her to nickname it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The UFC fighter. Uh, she dedicated her 34 second win uh, to Rowdy Piper, <laughs> which was the yeah. greatest thing. I'm not a big UFC fan, but oh my god, that was great. The only next thing she needs to do is start uh, Rowdy, Row, Rowdy Ronda, Rowdy Roddy Roddy Rowdy Ronda. <laughs> Pit. Exactly. So she could bring people on to interview and then beat the shit out of them. She could have done that after the comp- after yeah. the fight on Saturday. <laughs> well, you know what? She almost kind of did her own little Piper's Pit there in the yeah. ring when she got done with old what's her name and said, "Don't cry." Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> because that other you lady, that other lady took it a little too far with personal attacks and her family and all. That yeah, because stuff. her talking shit to Rhonda. Rhonda's da- uh, dad committed suicide when she was fi- he, when she was 15, and she said in an interview, you know, everything's going good for Rhonda now, but I worry about her when she loses. I'm paraphrasing. You know, I just hope she doesn't go and commit suicide. Ha ha ha. And she's like, wow. oh, I didn't know that her dad committed suicide. It's like bullshit. And Rhonda, to her credit, is awesome. She doesn't say a word. No. She's like, whatever, that's fine. You know, we'll talk about it later. You know, let's just no. have the fight. And she went out there and whooped her ass. And after she did, she just told the little girl, the woman, don't cry. Don't <laughs> cry. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. She's yeah. a classy figure, too. Did you see her? She uh, does everything right. Did you see her other comment after the match, Rhonda said? No. She's exactly. like, next time I would advise people not to talk about my family. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No. Like, like she needs more ammunition to yeah. beat the crap out of exactly. you. Exactly. I would be kissing her ass all the way up to the fight. This is going to be a great fight. I really hope you know mm-hmm. one of us. You know we're going to come out the best for no, it. A, it's a matter of time until they find a 135 pound guy to fight her with. Floyd then, Mayweather. You know, and I. <laughs> oh, I think it'll be great. great. It'll be like the battle of the sexes. And um, Billy Jean, yeah, throw Billie back Jean to King. old Billy Jean King tennis match, battle of the sexes. I, I would like to see. Yeah, but she, kick yeah, she, ass. she beat like a sixty-three-year-old uh, retired guy in the battle of the sexes. Yeah, well, Billy Jean, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, but I, but you know what? I think the best meme I saw on on the Facebook this to this uh, today was uh, it's got you know Ronda Rousey on in her little champion ring, and it says top of it says thirty-four seconds. Then at the bottom of it was, yeah, that's about how long I'd last, too. I did see that one. I mean, <laughs> I did see that one. No, Blake, I don't know what you mean. Well, no. In you know the what? fighting ring. Oh, like, okay. last 34 no, seconds. No, what I mean. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. No, no what I mean. Verb. Say no more. Say no more. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Nudge, nudge. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. So, Doug's so anyways, Roddy Roddy Piper. Yes. <laughs> so, Doug's not here this week. So, he oh, can't do the number hey. one fan. So, uh, Doug, number one fan, can't give yourself a nickname. Blake, what does he say? From Doug, who was giving us great, insightful yes. feedback. So does Fantastic Four underperform this week at the movies? 
Does anyone care, or is there any hype for this movie? Oh. Well, I suppose it all depends on what you consider underperform. I mean, does it do as much as any of the other recent superhero movies? Does it hit forty million? Oh, 40 million. Because we're going Thursday. Yes, we are. I have no expectations. I expect this to be a piece of shit. I'm because cautiously optimistic. Because of two reasons. I don't give a shit about these guys. I don't care about the comic book. I was never a fan of the comic book. And two, I've seen the other two shitty movies. Three, if you count the Roger Corman one. <laughs> which I still contend might be better than their first one that Fox put out. <laughs> or, yeah, Fox. Um... My so I really don't care. I'm going there to see it as a train wreck, and if it's better than that, I'll be happy. See, my feeling is everyone's talking about. Uh, I think what the people who are Fantastic Four fans are concerned about is it looks to be too different than the characters are. So, in my opinion, they might actually elevate the characters to make them better. The issue is, is what I'm hoping for. The anyway. issue is director Josh Trank. Has been put through the ringer by 20th Century Fox. Oh, there's been yeah. some issues. There's there's been a lot of talk and uh, they had to bring another director and... in supposedly to do reshoots because Trank isn't getting along with the studio. Uh, they've had Kate Mara, who looks like the most boring actress ever. She's like wait 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 wait. Blake Lively was in Green Lantern. She had like a look like she was happy promoting it. Kate Mara on every interview, she's like, "Oh, promoting it." I, I thought never, you meant in the film. I never saw. I never read any comic books from them. I didn't do any research. I just really don't know. I just read the script and did it. And it's like, oh well, okay. You don't have to read comic books, but you know, have some Greek credit. <laughs> Be excited. <laughs> At least no. Oh, story. Say, I got paid, bitch. Yeah, my no, I, I have respect for someone who said that. I got paid. I got paid. Michael B. Jordan, at least, is saying, I didn't read the comic books growing up. Nobody reads Fantastic Four except Nickel from Graphic Novice. <laughs> but anyways, it's like Superman from Lansing. No one cares about Superman. But at least Michael B. Jordan's like, no, but I read the script and it was, you know, about these kids trying to find their own. And, you know, he's trying to sell it. Kate Mara was like, no, I just got my hair cut. It got short. I don't know. I just had to look good. And uh, she's a scientist, so I got yeah. to wear spandex. Did you get to say long words? Mm, yes, like <laughs> Newfoundland. <laughs> I didn't get to eat Tarried. cupcakes during filming for my figure. Miles B. Jordan, or Miles B. Jordan, Miles, Miles Teller. B. Jordan. <laughs> Miles Teller uh, is in it too, and I really don't care about him, but you know, good for him. Yeah, um, you know, if, you, if you're in a movie, at least I, 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 yeah. I can, if you didn't really do any preparation for it, like a good actor does. At least pretend you did when you're Just, doing interviews. You're acting. <laughs> At least act like you're acting like you're infused about it. The issue is 20th Century Fox has put in an embargo, not just on Graphic Novice, but they put an embargo on movie reviews, film critics. They cannot release it until Thursday night they or Thursday afternoon. They bumped it up. They were getting so much trash and feedback and basically a backlash from the uh, social media. They said, oh, we met Wednesday. That was our bad. You can put the review out Wednesday afternoon. No, I, we said Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. And you guys know? We said Kate Wednesday. Kate Mara, can you act like that? Can you act and tell them that? I think they said Thursday. You suck, Kate Mara! I, I, I really don't know when they said... Is that a is that a press release? No. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so at least Michael B. Jordan uh, does what a good actor does. He looks fakes at it. it. You 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 find Just your fake. character's motivation, which it sounded like he was doing, and he applied it to himself a little. You know, that's what a good actor does. And I uh, I would like to see have Michael B. Jordan come onto our show. And, I really would like to see. Is him he talk actually to him. related to we, Michael Jordan? No. No. Okay, I was wondering. Yeah. Tweet, tweet at him. I will. I'll tweet at him. I really like him. I'm, I want to see the new Rocky spinoff Creed because of him. I, I really do. He's great uh, on Parenthood. You know what? I've seen him on Parenthood. My <laughs> wife is hooked on that show. And uh, he's. He, I liked him. So, anyways, uh, yeah, so we're seeing that. My review uh, will be on nerdly.co.uk on Friday. Will so. you use the British spelling of words? No. No? No. O U R S. No. I can barely say words. I sure really don't want to try spelling different words. If the word ends in a vowel, just put an R at the end of it. So instead of saying a good fella, you got to say good feller. You know what I might do, though? If the show is, if the film is really that bad? Use the word brilliant 
Or not brilliant. Not brilliant. <laughs> rubbish. 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 Ooh, I like rubbish. Yes. Rubbish is a good one. Uh, <laughs> I actually was going to say some people just want to watch the world burn like this film. I may do something like that. Do that too. So, but you would have to read it like. But it start might. off with Dear Wankers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, okay. Dear Wankers, this film is rubbish. <laughs> uh, okay. Nice. Right, so anyway, he uh, he has a fun fact for you. Fun fact. And this has a lot of numbers in it, so you following at home, uh, get a piece of paper out and write these down. If you're driving, don't do that. Just listen. Pull over. Pull over or get, pull over. That's right. Get your pie chart out That's right. try to figure this out. All right. Fun fact from Doug. He says, of the 32 movies George Clooney has been in, Tomorrowland is seventh in total gross for him, and only the Ocean Films, Gravity, Perfect Storm, and his Batman film are the only movies to make $100 million. It's behind Shia LaBeouf for all-time gross, and Shia has made 12 less movies. Shia. LaDouche. <laughs> Shia LaDouche. Shia yes. LaDouche. That kind of surprised I, me. I did not... Apparently, ex- don't get in a car with Shia LaBeouf or grab his bag with a bunch of German people because he, it goes bad for him. Why? You didn't see that huh. internet viral thing? I guess he's drunk and screwed up in a car with German people, and somebody <laughs> took his bag... And he went ballistic? Yeah. Uh, he goes ballistic on everything. Yeah, well... Uh, well, the, the one thing I could say is George Clooney actually does a lot artier type movies. Yeah, I just... He's not necessarily work. looking for the blockbuster. And I think I like him because of that. Yeah. That he does good film, Good films, my tomorrow line. Um, but... I, I just surprised that he didn't really have... Uh, he did Batman piece of shit. Ugh. Yeah, well, Batman and Tomorrowland, those were the... The big films or the popular studio films that he did, and those were his worst films. So I think I was listening to 365 Flicks podcast on the way to Gen Con. Thank Three, you, 365 and a quarter. Yes, thank you, chaps, for getting me through the drive, uh, the big long hour and ten minute drive. Uh, but they said. I think it was them that they said uh, Mr. Freeze is coming to Gotham next season yeah. in season two, and they want yeah. every word or every sentence to, he says a pun. That's all they want for the whole movie. They want him to come out in the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Bruce Wayne. Nice to see you. There you go. <laughs> I thought that was clever. So, right. so Shia yeah, LaBeouf has Sorry. made 12 less movies. So that means of the 32 of Clooney, LaBeouf has made 20. But LaBeouf, LaDouche, he's uh, obviously made, his movies have made more money. Well, he's in three Transformer movies, which somehow continue to and, make money. Yeah, I don't know how that Just stop works. It. And they he, continue he to make in them. The, uh, Indiana Jones. The fourth in Indiana the, Jones. Indiana Jones. Uh, made well, a well, lot of money. I, I, I really mm. hope they continue that trilogy with Shia LaDouche. Oh my god, that would be great. Hey, Mutt Jones, how you doing? Mm. Yeah. And that, folks, is called sarcasm. Yes. And he yes. was in Holes. Holes. <laughs> <laughs> that horrible movie. I remember it that. It also describes him. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't too bad for a kid's movie. It was although just metaphorical. They take <laughs> a, I hate when they do that. They take a book and, you know, just cast whoever they think is a cute, popular actor at the time instead of finding someone that actually fits the character that people who read the book or, you know, you know. Oh, so he's supposed to be a slow fat guy. Let's get Shia LaBeouf to play him. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jerry O'Connell was too uh, busy at the time, so. <laughs> well, he was and also, he's old. <laughs> he's also 15 years old or 20 years older <laughs> than that. Uh, yeah, I mean Shia LaBeouf, La Douche, sorry. Uh, oh, obviously makes bigger movies, but. Look at the quality. I'm going with George Clooney on quality. Yeah, quality George wins. Well, that's a good question. Which one would you rather be, have a career in Hollywood? George Clooney. Now, you're not actually being George Clooney, but you make 32 smaller you, 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 films. Do you, you get all of George Clooney's women? No, well, just own, career. We're just, you. Just, just, just a career. career. Oh, career. Yeah. Just, okay, okay. You know, you're, you're known for these movies, not the Hollywood stuff. Just the movies he was in versus right. the movies. Or you're like Shia LaDouche and you make shitty Transformer films. But you're also making tons of money for the studios and obviously for you. And but you're equated with shitty movies like that. What do you think? Which one do you take? Personally, I believe that there you can reach a level where this is enough money. I don't need to make tons and tons of money. So as long as I'm at this level and I can be at this level making the <clears throat> movies that I think are good, I would rather do that. I agree. 
I agree. I'd rather make money. I'd well, hold on. Yeah. I'd rather uh, make movies that are good than make shitty movies and make a lot of money because then the rest of your life is like you're tagged with that. I was in those shitty movies. Like Jason Biggs, he's the pie fucker. Yeah, he's the pie fucker. <laughs> I'm the pie, the pie fucker. fucker. The rest of my pie. life, I'll be the pie fucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he got cut from Orange is the New Black season three. Did Anyone he? else watching Orange is the New Black? Apparently Orange is no. the New Black got cut from uh, Netflix. I heard they this was the last, this was it. They weren't coming back for another season. No, they renewed them for season four. Somebody lied to me then. Yeah, season four was already renewed. Do, 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 do. I it's heard just they, in. I heard they cut season four. Maybe somebody misunderstood. Oh. Yeah. Uh, season three has not been that great. It's good, but it's not like nothing's happened. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's a good story, like the characters are, but eh. okay, moving on. All right, so next we got uh, from Nikki Hobbit Dash Hulk at Pumazili. Hobbit Hulk. She's yeah. now a uh, Hobbit Hulk. This is all in capital letters, followed by a bunch of exclamation points, and basically she says, "Pointed at me. How can you not like Lego? I like the movie." Uh, yeah, but you cheered for the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with and that. And the bad guy was played by Will Ferrell. So? He was the builder. It's real tough to cheer for Will Ferrell in almost anything. Uh, we wrong. got the video games, the Batman video games and that, and that uh, Lego video games. Yeah. Uh, I make my wife do because I seriously get frustrated trying to figure out what to build. And I'm not kidding. I really, it fucking annoys me. And my son's like, oh, look, Dad, you can do that. You're fine. How do you know that? <laughs> But, I don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but still, so how do you not like Lego? How don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, easy. They're annoying. You play with them and they fall apart. I'm done. Get yeah. super glue. No. Like your hero, the builder. Well, uh, that's why I used to do yeah, super glue them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. She also wants to know regarding fellow Kiwis. I mean, New Zealanders. Who are these people? We have a lot. We have some New Zealanders. Why don't they let their presence be known? I don't know. I'm calling out to New Zealand. Uh, send Kiwis. us some questions. Send us some questions. Send something so any in other, reference any, Nikki at Puma Zealy. Any other New Zealander other than Nikki? Well, Nikki can send know. questions. Well, yeah, but yeah, but we, but yes, I don't want to say Nikki can't send us any correct. more questions. But uh, she she wants to have a uh, probably you know a Hobie community down there uh, in New New Zealand. So she wants you to get in touch, you know. Let Even us know. Australians, we we do have people in Australia. Come on, send some questions. Hey, what happened to our one Aussie fellow? He still listens, I think. Awesome. I think so. Yeah. But you know, he hasn't tweeted to us much. Yeah. I hope he's still alive and he get eaten by that large crocodile thing. Oh, that would suck. That thing was scary. Yeah, it was. All right. Yeah, let us know if you're still alive. Uh, okay. Time Magazine uh, has no Orange is the New Black wasn't canceled. Okay, so there was a bad uh, rumor going around. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I've got fooled by it. Okay, good. Right. So, following up, Nikki, she's got one last thing. She says, without listening to the rest of the discussion at Bad Ideas Podcast, I thought it was because Vision had pur- pure intentions that he could lift the hammer. We had a news story about why Vision was able to lift Thor's hammer. Yes. Go to the next one. Not the next one, but go to Devin. Skip down one. Oh, my God. I'm out of order. Yeah, that's Devin. right. Devin yep. uh, says, holy shit, Blake pronounced my name right on the first try. Impressive, sir. Well done. That's what you wanted me to read? No, keep no, going. Keep oh. going. <laughs> There's more. Well, There's, There's more. more. Oh. Domino Rally was great <laughs> once you... Oh, wait, not that one? Well, well you read that one. Hold on. In the <laughs> comics, Vision can lift Mjolnir. Mir, mir. Because the enchantment doesn't apply to... Al. That's AI. AI. Oh, to uh, artificial intelligence and androids. Come on, you fuckers always mock me. <laughs> and you say Al? Al? I did that on purpose because oh. I was the only one who got his name right. Uh huh. So now I'm mispronouncing That's right. shit. He's mispron- I don't know. That capital I does look like a small L. It, it looks does. like it says Al. You know, whoever typed these notes up. Jason. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> But yes, that's what, uh, so that, yes, hammer discussion. But also from uh, Devin at uh, Real Big though. Dev. What bothers you? What, well, what? like, robots can pick it up, so if I, if I can, well, if I can control a robot, then I can pick it up yeah. vicariously. Sure. So being in a suit of armor is technically a robot. Why can't Iron Man no, pick it up? No, because you're in the suit of armor. Yeah, that's why. You oh. have to, like, Xbox remote control them. Oh, yeah. so if one of the automated suits of armor from Iron Man 3, since there were, like, thousands of them, mm-hmm. one of them could have picked up the hammer? Or Krang from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
Kang? Kang? Kang. I think. Whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, he <laughs> can pick it up. So, that's okay. another one. I don't know. <laughs> or the little kid from AI. <sighs> the little kid. From Haley Joel Osment? <laughs> Does that mean Vicky from Small Wonder could pick it up? Yes. Yes. Everybody loves Small Wonder. I hate that Wonder. show. It was a creepy show. I would love to see Small Wonder wielding Thor's hammer. What about that creepy uh, girl that plays the maid in the Richie Rich preview that we saw a few months ago from oh. Netflix? Oh, I blocked that out of my memory. Oh, God. You should block that out of your memory. Okay, Did but, it actually air? Yes, they're coming back oh, for season two. Shoot, who the hell watched that? Anyway. <laughs> If you watched it, tweet us. All right, no, I'm kidding. I hate you. <laughs> Domino Rally, anyways, uh, Devin F. at uh, Real Big Dev says, Domino Rally was once was great once you filed off the injection molding sprues. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Domino Rally was great once you filed off the injection molding sprues. That's straight from Twitter. <laughs> I had a little truck that laid out dominoes. Oh, okay, so he's talking about domino rally is great once you filed yeah. off something off of the molding. Sure. Yeah, like like you know when the little parts that stick out because the molding injections. If you filed the little things that this is clear as mud out. is what you're doing. I yes. think the, the, the yeah, hand injections. I, I, I'm are hand really gestures gestures that are the, really uh, helping. The is helping out <laughs> Well, I, th- I think our audience understands. I'm trying to get you guys to understand. Uh, Doctor Who <laughs> sees it, and that's about it. He's in the window this week. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do my Marcel Marcel You mean Doctor Number One? <laughs> now you're calling Doctor Number One Doctor Who? Doctor Number One, <laughs> whatever his name is. <laughs> we do have a question from Bobby H. Uh, or response from Doctor Who. We'll get to that next week because we're running. You know, a little long here. A little long, but uh, to finish up from Doctor Number One at Doctor Number One, regarding an article showing new Ghostbusters cast visiting Children's Hospital in full costume, uh, you can Google that online. He gives a HTTP address, which is HTTP address. <laughs> Haven't they suffered enough? <laughs> the kids. The kids. The kids. I, I hoped he meant the kids. <laughs> Hasn't Christian Wig and Melissa McCarthy suffered enough? They have to go to a children's hospital now. Uh, <laughs> you know, punctuation sometimes when you tweet stuff is pretty important. <laughs> hey, kids, uh, look, the Ghostbusters are here. Oh, really? Uh, Bill Murray? No. Where's Christian? Oh. oh, the kids are suffering again. Game me. The kid's all flatlined. Oh, it's Kristen Wiig. Beep. <laughs> I got tiny hands. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I got cancer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you, Kristen wow. Wiig. <laughs> There's your listener feedback. It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. Okay, uh, here's the best one. I love this story because I've been following it. Well, I don't know. I think they said it's been in development hell for since 2009, uh, 2010. What has been? The Crow reboot. Reboot. Oh, let's reboot. reboot it. Oh, I would be interested in that if they didn't screw it up. Well. Or you can just go back and watch the original, the original film and I enjoy like it. it. I do like it. Ca-ca! And I do enjoy Bag, it. fuck, you're dead. Okay. I love the original. It's very, <clears throat> even the soundtrack is good. The soundtrack is good. Uh, the Crow reboot hit another snag when the Hollywood, Hollywood Reporter is stating that pre-production has completely stalled, with an entire production crew said to have left the project, and the, the studio, Relativity Media, has filed bankruptcy on Thursday. Ah, well, that makes it, means it's going to be real difficult for them to make a movie. Just to give you some of the issues in development hell with this, uh, they lost, I think, at least three leading uh, stars of the movie, like the main actors, yeah. uh, including uh, the latest star, Jack Houston. Huston? I have no idea who that is. Anybody know? I don't know who he is. I'm uh, going to say Divergent. You know why? Because everybody seems to be Divergent or Maze Runner <laughs> or something. Right. He bowed out uh, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. Uh, they've had a revolving door of directors. Well, they, Luke oh, Evans sorry. was in it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Luke and Evans was the main he star. He departed. In January. And there was somebody else that was a... De- uh, um, Tom Hiddleston? Was he looking at it? Wow. Well, there was another one, like a decent sized star. He backed out. Ugh. And uh, and then they've had a revolving door of directors. Ugh. And then finally, it looked like it was pick up steam earlier this year uh, with Jessica Brown Finley... Andrea Risenborough, no idea, and Risenborough. Forrest Whitaker, all in talks to co-star, and now mm. it's been bankrupt. Can we just end this now? There's a, you know, there, there's, there's a reason. There's no way that this will be good now. 
That's no. all there is no. to it. And you know what? If the stars are backing out, directors are backing out, it, it basically means that uh, the studio that's owning this is basically fucking it up big time. Well, now they are because they're bankrupt. Well, now they are because now they're bankrupt. Yeah, now they're done. Would you done. think you would be pushing to get this made if you're that studio? If you know you're going bank or you know you're in dire need, you just do it right. Uh, it looks like Jack Houston uh-huh. uh, was in American Hustle, Boardwalk oh. Empire TV show. Oh, that's right. Uh, in uh, Boardwalk, Cape the Boardwalk Empire, who he played in that. It says Outlander. He's the Outlander from 2008. No. That's the other movie. He wasn't. Uh, who was he? Oh, uh, you want his character's yeah. name? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> not even. Richard Haro. Okay. Yeah, he's that one guy. If I see his picture, I would know it. Forty-one episodes. Yeah, I. <laughs> I remember seeing his picture and knowing who he is. Okay. He, was, still an out, he was an Outlander, wasn't it? The Tom Cruise. Is that the movie? Uh, let me the see. The movie? Or are we talking what? about the I have no idea. I TV think it's show. movie. Uh, not the new Outlander. Was that the one where they, he was an astronaut and they, made, they cloned him and they invaded Earth with him? And... Oh, it's Jim Caviezel. Oh, no, that was the new one. That was... Um, then he's in The Zones. End of Time. No, what was that? Oh, you know. That Edge, one. Edge of Tomorrow? Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, jeez. We yeah. were way <laughs> off. <laughs> Say tonight. We were way <laughs> off. Hey, give me two decades. I'll get it. <laughs> I'll get it within two decades, all right? That's an IOU right there. That's right. No, Outlander starred Jim Caviezel, Sophie <clears throat> Miles, and John Hurt, along with Jack Houston. Is that the sequel Ron to The Perlman Passion of the Christ? Uh, no, every movie that Jim Caviezel does is not Passion of the Christ related. I beg to differ. <laughs> uh, Do they have see. Christ themes? <laughs> he kept coming back. They couldn't kill him. <laughs> Self sacrifices. Uh, I keep having holes in my hand. Uh, after reports earlier this week uh, that said 20th Century Fox. Fox's Gambit may be losing Channing Tatum. Oh, uh, no! Uh-huh, and I made a push for it, and I think I got it. Uh, <laughs> I don't Re- think you did get it. Keep reading. Time out. Hollywood <laughs> Reporter states that is not from the Tates has closed the deal. Uh, I will say, a little behind the scenes thing, my agent played hardball with, the Holly- with uh, 20th Century Fox. We did ask for some outlandish things. I do apologize. Uh, I would be more than happy to be in Gambit. I don't have to be his. Uh, I don't have to be Gambit. I could be his brother, um, <laughs> his younger brother. It's like twins. Uh, the movie. You could be uh, Standing Man Number Two. Yes, <laughs> like in the background, <laughs> just stand there. No, no, he needs lines. They did offer me a role as the pastry chef in the bakery <laughs> because I gave my. Oh, would you like this croissant that I charged up and threw at you? Oh, I am Remy Lebu. You know, the good part is the two French listeners we had already turned us off. Yeah. So there's no way that they'll be offended now. Oh, but but I, I, I think all our Creole listeners are very oh, offended. Oh, wait a minute. We do have the French Canadians. I got to say. We do have uh, the Quebecians. My uh, French Louisiana accent is... Uh, uh, that's more like South Carolina. No, you need to be, you need to be more, we more when I get home down in Nolan. I'm not a uh, uh, water no, boy. No, be no, no, no. <laughs> uh, that movie took place in Louisiana. Yeah. I gotta say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do I declare. Mean, no, 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 I do declare. That's the <laughs> only <laughs> southern line you say. Try to be southern. I have to say I do declare. I do declare. I uh, like my grits. Uh-huh. Especially charged up. <laughs> Let's go back to the French chef. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, he's now signed on. The big uh, thing is that uh, one of the things they were talking about, the reason why he was hesitant is uh, they were trying to make him basically the focal point of the whole X-Men franchise. So he, they were debating on how many movies he would be in with Hugh Jackman uh, gearing up for his last run as Wolverine. Remy LeBeau, a.k.a. Gambit, Gambit, is the new anchor in the X-Men universe. Headline his own films and joining others. I think that's not a great thing. <laughs> that Remy LeBeau, not to be confused with Remy LaCroix. <laughs> it is Remy LaCroix. <laughs> What's Remy LaCroix? Don't look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Remy it. LaCroix, huh? So the Hollywood Reporter also notes back end, speaking of Remy LaCroix, back end <laughs> compensation. <laughs> What's up, so sticking point? I have never seen Blake turn that shade of red before. 98% of audience. What the fuck are they talking about? <laughs>
<laughs> Are you Googling it yet? Oh, I'm Googling it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Anyways, Remy LaCroix. <laughs> Okay, Gambit. That's Remy LeBeau. Oh, back <laughs> in. Oh God. Moving on. Uh, no, so yes, Tate is coming back to Gam. Is going to be Gambit. Good for him. I like Tate's. Uh, I don't know if Gambit should be uh, your main central point, but you know, good for them. Okay. Whew. Uh, William Shatner in a new documentary called Chaos on the Bridge states all was not well during the Star Trek Next Generation uh, series. He states uh, Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry tried to derail it. Uh, he sent attorneys to uh, the studios and to the uh, soundstage, wasn't it, basically? The this, uh, set to uh, yes. bitch about everything? Yes. And uh, Roddenberry's inner circle constantly cycled throughout the set, meddling always on the behalf of Roddenberry, and uh, they sowed numerous seeds of discord throughout the cast. It was like high school, it felt like. It seemed. Yeah, it was like he sent an army of people to bitch and complain about the whole new kickoff. Uh, his one lawyer uh, managed to get into a screaming match with Pike, which I think is one of the main people there, uh, which uh, the ex-chief yelled at him, I hope you die, at his attorney, I hope you die. <laughs> so that was good. Yeah, that's always attorney-like. Uh, Roddenberry, oh, I'm sorry, uh, the doc report, documentary reports that Roddenberry had little to no desire to even relaunch the franchise, only decided to sign on once Paramount prepared to uh, do uh, the next generation without him, and Roddenberry claiming he was friends with Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard, he insisted on a utopian world which hamstrung the show's writers who struggled to create a drama in the 23rd century without greed, jealousy, violence, or any other hook that breeds story arcs. <laughs> I want you to write this story in this perfect world. So, so does the perfect world fall apart? Fall apart? No. no, no. We're there's, just going to talk. <laughs> We're going to play chess. Everybody's happy. Well, see, that's why it was always the outside aliens invading and disrupting our perfect world. Oh. Did yeah. you find Remy LaCroix? Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited. No. Go ahead, explain who... <laughs> Well, it was uh, as an American pornographic actress. But before entering the adult industry, LaCroix was a specialty dancer whose performances included fire dancing, aerial skills, and hula hooping at Burning Man, as well as oh, hula music hooping at Burning festivals. Man. <laughs> she also has a bachelor's degree in biology. Good for her. She started in the industry in December 2011 with a gangbang scene <laughs> for kink.com. She worked for six months before announcing that she was leaving porn, citing burnout. <laughs> although she, con- I don't know which one. <laughs> although she continued to honor previous commitments, <laughs> Just, you know. worked for the talent department at Kink.com and promoted her unreleased movies. Then she decided to return to shooting in November of 2012. That was a strong commitment to quitting. <laughs> <laughs> She uh, was scheduled to be a judge on the web-based reality show The Sex Factor, which was a what? pornographic version of The X Factor. <laughs> How do you do your tryout? <laughs> you got 90 seconds. Get it done. <laughs> yeah, she's also known for her back end. <laughs> That's why I lost it. But anyways. My, my, my favorite part about this, though, is uh, gangbang scene is a clickable... Uh, I would advise you not to click that. Click, uh, it, it, it's, it's on uh, Wikipedia here, so uh, I want to see what how Wikipedia describes it. Well, it's your computer. Go ahead. Gang no. bang scene. No. Can nope. we go ahead and like delete that whole segment? No. Nope. <laughs> We're not going to. <laughs> gang bang pornography is a type of pornography <laughs> that depicts stop, an stop, individual stop, engaged stop, stop, blah, stop. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I just spilled my beer on my shirt here. <laughs> That wasn't beer. Patrick Stewart was not the initial choice for Picard. Yafit Kota was the Yafit top. Yafit Kota. Was he the uh, Russian comedian? No, that was Yafit. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are so close on that one. Uh, he only became captain after auditioning with a wig that had been FedEx from uh, London to his Los Angeles uh, audition. So. Oh, wow, Yafet Koto. He was in Live and Let Die. And Alien. And The Running Man. Oh. Interesting. He would have been Picard? Let me see what he looks like. Let me see. You've seen that guy. Look. He would have been Picard? Yeah. He was also a bad guy in Commando, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Probably. Uh, quickies, Ian McShane is heading to Game of Thrones for the yeah. show's sixth season. Yeah. First big name to be confirmed. 
Uh, as to who McShane will play in Game of Thrones, the network is insane, but according to Entertainment Weekly, sources say McShane has a relatively small part, amount of screen time during the season, yet his character is of key importance. That, okay. that says to me... He's Peter Dinklage's dad. No. No, oh. he's already been killed off. That oh. says to me... Spoiler alert. Flashback. Flashback. Uh, Tower of Joy. Yay! That's right. He probably wields a sword called... The Morning Sword. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to say who he is. I don't want to spoil it. Yes. That yeah. sounds thrilling. It's not Remy LaCroix. <laughs> or Remy LeBeau, for that matter. Remy LeBeau. I am that. Remy LaCroix. Oh, I am Remy LaCroix. Woo. Uh, she was of uh, German and Portuguese descendants. Sven. Uh. <laughs> so I know Sven. 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 <laughs> Jeff is now fixated with Remy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, yeah, Ian McShane, he's probably going to be in the flashback. I bet you it would be awesome if they start off the flashback with the Tower of Joy scene. Uh, despite popular rumor, Emily Blunt has not signed on yet as Ms. Marvel for the upcoming film. The word in there is yes. yet. Blunt? Yes. She was uh, uh, <laughs> blunt about this. Uh, she was. And she said, ha ha, you're so funny. Uh, I'm legal everywhere soon. Uh, anyways... <laughs> She was supposed to be playing Black Widow. She had to pass on him because of scheduling. Then she was supposed to be uh, Agent Carter, uh, and she had to pass, and she said just the time has been off, but she would like to do a superhero film. Well, yeah, it's money. Uh, J- money in the bank. John Krasinski, her husband, she, she's said... She's more excited than uh, the, the, the lady from the Fantastic Four. Alex. Yes, she's yeah. <laughs> more excited than Kate Mara. <laughs> Uh, she sold Fantastic Four better than Kate Mara, and she's not even in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like being a superhero film. Kate Mara, I don't know what a superhero film is. I don't know. I got killed in House of Cards. Anyways. Spoiler alert. Okay, it's been out for a while. Not, no, season two. I'm not done with season two yet. It's the first episode. Okay, I didn't start season two yet. <laughs> I called you out on that shit. First well, episode. Am I not done with season two? <laughs> Am I not done? We are done with News of the Geek, though. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. This is Jason from the History of Bad Ideas, and just reminding you can catch us every Wednesday on nerdly.co.uk, which is England's and UK's number one website for geek-related news, including movies, films, and comic book reviews. You can also catch us on musingsofgeek.com, Tangent Bound Network, Wicked Radio Network, and even Danger Entertainment. All you have to do is Google one of them, and you'll be able to find us, along with a lot of other great uh, podcasts on those channels. You can also hear us every Friday on Geek Life Radio, which can be found at www.geekliferadio.com at 10 a.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Central. So check us out, and uh, thanks for listening. Roger says goodbye. Put that coffee down. Call and all film fans, want to add a little more fun to your podcast diet? Well, why not listen to the 365 Flicks podcast? We're the lads from Smallville, UK. We love to bring you the latest news, our own special brand of meaningless movie nonsense, as well as a bunch of top fives you really won't care about. I'm Kev. I'm Chris. We're pissy. We're fanboys. We're having another beer. We're the 365 Flicks podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, Podomatic, and many, many others. Also look for us on musingsofageek.com and wickedradionetwork.com. Sick of listening to all those overpaid movie critics? Then tune in to the 365 Flicks podcast, your vocal heroes of pissy opinion. It's time for Box Office Bombs. All right. Vacation disappoints at the box office with less than $15 million for the weekend as the film was projected to get between 25 and 30 And it's getting a Rotten Tomato ranking of 23%. That's not good. That isn't good. I really wanted to see it. I kind of still do, but I'll, that's one I was probably just going to wait for, you know, home viewing of some sort. Whether it be Netflix or Redbox or something. I just thought about seeing it on Thursday night. 
I didn't, obviously, but uh, I thought about it. But it did start on a Wednesday, so the numbers are a little skewed. It did end up making, well, we'll talk about 21 we'll talk about million, but yeah. uh, for the weekend, they, they were expecting a lot more. Um, they said the part of the issue is that Chevy Chase wasn't in it enough. It's like uh, this... Chevy Chase is in it too much, probably. Yeah. Chevy Chase is not aged gracefully. And he's not going to sell tickets. I don't yeah. really think oh, that yeah, much. This... Yeah, this crowd is not going to see Chevy Chase movies. And everybody thinks he's a prick because of uh, community. No, everybody he thinks he's community. a prick because he's a prick. Well, that too. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> uh, next. Uh, Pixels fell to number five. And yes! Only, only made $10.5 million, which is about $10 million more than it should have. Total. In its second week and is now considered a disappointment by the studio. And was the highest percentage drop of the last five films by Sandler. An even worse drop than Jack and Jill. That shocked me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is embarrassing. Well, the only thing I can say is Jack and Jill probably opened so bad that, you know, there wasn't even enough. Number to drop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the number couldn't have been lower. Yeah. Thank you, people, for renewing my faith in the world at All least right. a little bit well we were look at the top five from uh, july 31st through august 2nd mission impossible rogue nation made 56 million dollars <throat> in its opening weekend on a budget of 150 million dollars i thought that was a little low because i thought oh that, you know i i would be expecting they were they were hoping for like 80 million because yeah. it's a big film and they said the studios were actually tracking at 40, so they oh. were ecstatic with 56. All right. And it made a, it makes a lot overseas. They said it hasn't yeah. even opened in China, and that's uh, they love Mission Impossible over there. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, so, that's, they make it for the international audiences, I think. And they already uh, stated that the next Mission Impossible is uh, starting up next year to film. Is so. Tom Cruise signed yep. on? Yep. Oh, okay, because I thought he was kind of going to pass the torch. No, yeah, he's uh, he said he's having too much fun, so they're going to do it again. All right. Uh, vacation uh, over the weekend made fourteen point nine, a total of twenty one million. On a, was that an unknown budget? Uh, that is a known budget. Uh, I believe it was thirty five million. I think it was. Yeah, so it'll get money back. Yeah, you know, but they be... said it's a big disappointment because they were hoping it would lift it pretty high. I think they were expecting their expectations on a vacation remake to be. And did too did much. the. Re- did any of the vacations really make a lot of money? I mean, I don't feel like they did. I, I think feel the like the original one did, and the Christmas one did. Okay, I but think the I European think one did real good at the box mm-hmm. office. I don't know exactly. You know, obviously that was in the mid '80s, so they I don't definitely know how they made it on the uh, remade it on the back end. I think maybe at the yeah. box office, vacation was yeah. that was the first National Lampoon's movie they put their name on in a long time since. Animal, Animal House. House, I think, right? I'm not positive. I don't know. The, I'm not positive. I'm not, I don't know the history of the National Lampoon. Uh, we can movie. say yes, though. We can yep. say yes. Yeah, yes. We're, we're right yes. until proven wrong anyway, so yes. go ahead. All right. Well, number three in the week, Ant-Man made $12.5 million, a total of $132 million on a $130 million budget. Ooh, so it barely domestically crossed. beat, got its budget back. So its international is... it. Uh, I'm mixing my metaphors here. I was going to say a cup of coffee or something. But no. <laughs> Pour yourself a cup of ambition. It's uh, icing on the cake. Uh, here we go. Uh, National Lampoon's Vacation uh, yeah. made lifetime gross in theaters uh, $61 million. That's huge at that time, yeah. Uh, opening was $8 million. Uh, let's see here. Uh, European Vacation made $49 million. Uh, Christmas Vacation made $71 million. Ooh. Yeah, See, I was right about the Christmas. Yeah. And Vegas made 36 uh, So I was so. right on two of those. Yeah. I didn't know Christmas made that much. I thought it was more of a call. But, I mean, all of these shows... All oh, the any movie f- released at Christmas time that has any semblance of being good makes money. Christmas with the Cranks? I said it has any semblance <laughs> of being good. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, finished Ant Man. Uh, number four was Minions. Another twelve million for its over two hundred eighty-seven million on a seventy-four million dollar budget. So Minions Man, is raking in the dough almost four times. And how much money do you think that's making on uh, product placement? Oh all the- God, <laughs> it's everywhere. And uh, Jason's favorite movie, Pixels, made its ten and a half million 
Total of over $45 million on an $88 million budget. Go fuck yourself, Kevin James. <laughs> Sorry. Do you think they'll make their $88 million back no. domestically? They said they're predicting around 50 to $52 million. So, I'm, so I'm, they better hope the international market is I, better. It hasn't. I think it's, it has not done well internationally either. Thank God. Well, opening August 7th upcoming, we got Fantastic Four. We're sneaking out Thursday night to see that. Uh, followed by The Gift. Don't know what that one is. No idea. Uh, also, Ricky and the Flash. Anybody? Don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, and Sean the Sheep movie. Which is oh. a cartoon. Oh, is it oh. Sean the Sheep movie yes. or Sean the Sheep movie? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's no colon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jason Bateman is in The Gift. That's the one where he's got that old high school buddy that starts stalking him. Oh, okay. I did see a preview for that. Kind of like one of those uh, thriller. Fate, fatal Attraction. Yeah, Fatal Attraction thriller things. Okay. Um, Ricky and the Flash is a Meryl Streep movie. Oh, is that why? Uh, let's see here. Uh, we didn't get a question from that. Uh, looks like, hold on, hold on. Uh, just making sure I get the right person. Uh, do you guys buy Meryl Streep as a rocker? Oh, man, I kind of want to see this. Yeah, that's uh, from Doctor Number One. Uh. Meryl Streep is a rocker, yay or nay? Uh, I'll have to see the movie, but it has Meryl Streep, Sebastian uh, Sebastian Stan, mm-hmm. Kevin Klein, Rick Springfield. Never going to give you up. That's not it. No, that's Rick <laughs> Astley. <laughs> I wish I had Jesse's girl. Well, that's the right words, but not the right... That's why I don't want to pay for copyright. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the right tone. Never going to give you up. Right Never going to let you down. Wrong, Rick. Wrong, Doesn't Rick. Matter. I'm still going with it. Okay. Uh, and here's the funny thing. I went to uh, look at Fantastic Four. I've yet to buy tickets for us, Jeff. Okay. Because what happens is I go online, I buy the tickets, and then Jeff just pays me back. We pick our seats at our theater. It's a recliner. It's a really nice. I went online, and there has been no tickets sold yet. Uh, usually for a um, big movie like this, yeah. a superhero movie, usually there's at least 15 to 20 tickets have been sold, and then they start, as the day gets closer, they get selling out or close. None. Nothing. You, you want well, me to just stop by know, the theater I, tomorrow, then? No, I'll pick it up. It's still fun. I don't think I've well, seen I mean, any you don't commercials. don't have to pay television, or te- television. Television. Pay the uh, computer. Uh, okay, yeah, prices. go pick, pick two up. a couple bucks. Okay, go ahead, pick them up. All right. So, I'll get them I, this time. I don't think I've seen any commercials for this movie. Tell Fantastic Four? Yeah. I don't think uh, I've seen any commercials. I have. I've, I've seen not, a I, couple. I think we've talked more about it on tonight and read shit about it than I've seen commercials we've on We've talked TV. about it more tonight than Kate Mara has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and more enthusiastically. <laughs> yes. I was in the movie. I, got hit by I turned train. invisible. <laughs> I know it sucks. I'm a scientist. I really think they're going to make Doctor Doom really bad. Okay, moving on. All right. Uh, buy, sell? Buy, sell. Real quick, buy, sell from the this week's opening, uh, or this past week's opening movies. If you're new to the show, we uh, take actors that, and actresses that are in the movies that just were released. And if they were stocks, would we buy or sell them? Yes. Based on how we think they're going to perform in the future. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, we'll start with Tom Cruise. Bye. I would buy, too. I never thought I would say that, but I would. <laughs> I, th- I think the bad publicity Tom Cruise is behind him. We're never going to get to the height of Tom Cruise popularity. But I think, you know, people were afraid of Tom Cruise. And then apparently, like, like the last couple of movies he did were not bad. I no. mean, I saw Jack Reacher, and it was actually a good movie. I heard that was decent. I yeah. heard, like said, uh, The Edge of Tomorrow. I heard great things about that one. Still have yet to see it. Possible sequel, too. He desperately wants to be the American James Bond. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he... Well, that's what his Ethan Hunt is supposed exactly. to be. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, I would buy Tom Cruise because I think he's going to, to he put thought, out some better things. Before I fell asleep last night, uh, I was watching... Uh, just going through my TV and that, and I was watching an old Mission Impossible TV show. Ah. The original. Oh, it's still great. Yeah, I saw they took them off Netflix. I watched some on Netflix. It was on but... Me TV or one of them. Okay. And uh, yeah, I was watching. It was last yeah. half hour. I was like, this is. It was really fun. I, I say Me TV or Meat TV. Me TV. Okay. Meat TV is a whole different thing <laughs> with uh, <laughs> Remy. Remy. Remy Lacroix, I think, as far as the Meat TV. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a, sp- a spoof of Ed TV. Oh, you know, anyway, we had to go there. Anyway. That's right. Uh, buy or sell Jeremy Renner. 
Chat Blake? Uh, I like Jeremy Renner. I'd buy him, sure. I would do too. I'd buy his stock. I think I would sell his stock. Because why? He's he, in Civil War. But he pissed off a lot of people. Uh, he always pisses off people. That's the thing. I, he I'd pisses buy off Jeremy people. Renner because a lot of people say I kind of look like him sometimes. You do? You, you do have a And you piss off a lot of people, so yeah. that's good. we got a lot of things but in common. I, I, I just Except know he's I've, rich. I've read stuff on Twitter and on you mm-hmm. know Facebook where people who... I wanted to be a fan of his, but you know he called... Uh, What's her name? Uh, Black Widow, a slut. So, yeah. uh, you know, I can't like him and I will never uh, see a movie or whatever because of him, uh, blah, blah. So I think until uh, until he does something to smooth over the female mm-hmm. uh, going audience, I don't think, I think I would sell. I think right now he's at his height. I'm buying him and then right before, before Captain America's Civil War, I'm selling him. Uh, Simon Pegg. I always gonna buy me some Simon Pegg, writer of the next Star Trek movie. Oh, you know, he's writing it, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, I uh, watched Shaun of the Dead again for the umpteenth time. Great film. Last week they were playing it last week on uh, cable or not cable satellite. So of course I had to watch. That's a great show. Great Did film. It? That's one I can't rewatch a lot. Really, Shaun of the I, Dead. I really enjoyed it the first time, and then I don't know what it is about. Well, it should have been your top the... five movies you can only watch one time. Then <laughs> he's throwing well, the records at him. Don't throw that one. Don't throw it's that definitely. one. <laughs> of course, that was uh, what episode number was that? I can't remember. Eight. 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 Forty something. <laughs> I think it was in sixties. <laughs> Seventeen. Uh, okay, moving on. Oh, uh, let's see. You guys are buying. Yeah, yeah we're Simon buying. Peg. You're selling. I'd buy Simon Peg too. Oh, I'll buy him Simon Pegg. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're on to Ed Helms. I'd vacation. buy him now because the stock's low because of vacation. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> I'm selling. He can only go better. He can only go up. Yeah, I'm but just, I'm selling. I mean, but what venue can he get into? You know, he's done the horrible bosses. He's done this one. He's no longer in. You know, his TV show, The Office. Yeah. The Office is no longer there. Where he's got to find another niche. Does, does, does he, hangover? Does he do another Hangover, hangover Five? Movie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, We're still not dead yet. I mean, out, the outside other two. the hangover, he's Finishes not really... Finishes the Mike Tyson tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> he's married to another hooker. <laughs> Has another baby. I don't know. <laughs> he just charted his career path. There you go. The, hang- yeah. the hangover. Father edition. Yeah. <laughs> Father's Day. Father's Day edition. I'm selling. I think I would sell. Yeah. Unless I bought him at the height of the hangover, and now I'm like nope, hemorrhaging it's money. Then maybe... maybe the rule is you're buying them right now. Buying, mm-hmm. or if you had them, you're selling them right now. Well, that's what I know. If if I already have the stock, I don't think it's I would sell it because you don't sell low. No, no you got to hold. Got no way to hold the. Um, and the last one, buy or sell Christina Applegate. I'm buying. I don't. I I feel like she always has a revival. I of something. would have bought her stock back with Married with Children. And I, would, I would have held on to it this entire time. I would have done it with Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. That's when I would have bought it. <laughs> Dishes are done, man. <laughs> wow. Do you see uh, David Faustino, who played Bud, is yep. doing a spin doing off of a Married with Children? off of Married with Children, yes. and oh, all wow. the Married with Children cast have agreed to make cameo okay. appearances yes. in the new, new show. So it's David Faustino and his and family? Probably, yeah. yeah, probably his so Bud. Be, and he's pretty family. rich, too, because he's a producer on a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a behind the scenes guy. He. he did a, a good job. Uh, See, he's, uh, he's kind of like do. stuck with the pie fucker. He's <laughs> always going to be Bud. Yeah. Oh, it's Bud. <laughs> you know, from Married with Children. I think. Yeah, he had a cameo in an Entourage mm. thing, or he. I think he would mm. reoccur a couple times, but they they you know pretty much referred to him as Bud or whatnot, and they, <laughs> they hated him for or he hated them for that. I think. Mm-hmm. So there's uh, your buy sell. Yeah. You know what that music means? Probably not. Because it's been forever since we've had one. I think it's before Blake joined the show. (laughs) It's a regular. I I remember that as a guest. Yes. (laughs) Episode 18 was that? Uh, I think that was Blake's first appearance, episode 18. I I broke my Hobie Hyman. That's right. Oh, God. (laughs) Appropriately on episode 18. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh. 
this is not referring to Hobie Hyman news. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that music means Chris Pratt news for you new listeners. Oh. <laughs> Every week for a while in the beginning, if you go back to listen to the early ones, don't. Uh, we did Chris Pratt news. Well, you start week. at number 18. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can break the your hymen, hymen, hymen episode. there, too. <laughs> you can break your hymen there, too. <laughs> According, to <Aaron> Ibn- <laughs> According to Entertainment Weekly radio host Mario Correa, whatever. Correa? Uh, sure. I think it's Correa. Okay. Mario Correa. Chris Pratt's writer in his film contracts is it R I D E R. That's right. Yes. In his film contracts is different than most. Basically, actors and actresses ask for certain things. They all their perks that you have to follow, or they'll you know call breach of contract. Like no green like, M and M's nope, in exactly in M and M's. Uh, no green M and M's in the bowl, which is true. Uh, I want a jet to take me to the place. But Chris Pratt writer is much different. It's basically all about his family. They said flying in his wife and his son Jack to the set. To get a certain number of days off so he can go see them. And it's all about family stuff. Uh, according to the host, it kind of shows what kind of guy he is. And it's one of the reasons that folks love him. So, yep. And I, I hear he pretty much said uh, he won't take uh, roles if they film out of the country. Huh. Or, yeah, he'll yeah, write it in that, you know, it'll... If he they want him in his movie, they'll film in, like, U.S., maybe Canada or something. Good for him. I think he made well, he's from it. Canada. Yeah. He's from Seattle. Is he from Seattle? I thought yes. he's Canada. No. No. Oh, okay. He's well, I'm from wrong. Seattle, but uh, both him and his wife were that, both from Seattle, and they met in L.A. That's right, because they're Seahawks <laughs> fans. That's right. Um, but, uh, Matt Damon is like that too. Uh, Matt that he, Damon. Matt Damon, he has to have a certain amount of days off. He only can. He will only work three or four days in a row, and then he has to have two days off to see his family. Don't so. do anything on the Shabba. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Shabazz. Oh, Shabazz. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say Shabazz. I, I going can't to... roll on Shabazz. Can't roll on Shabazz. I thought you were going to say there's money in the banana stand. There no. is money in there's the banana stand. There's always money yes. in the banana stand. So that's a little fun fact for Chris Pratt. Uh, once the uh, you know restraining order is lifted, I hope he tweets me back. <laughs> Excellent. Now it's on to our top five. And our top five this week. Oh, let's see if I can get this correct. Top five events that you want to see in person. I want to be there. I don't want to be watching it on television from miles and miles away. I don't want your life. Okay, sorry. Anyways, uh, so this is something you haven't been to before and you would like to go to. Uh, I will say we'll get to the listener feedback here after we're done. There's a lot of um, areas that people went off into. Yeah, but hey, it's their lists. They can put whatever they want it's on it. It's their top if we, five. If we can't count, they can do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> Blake does his own, usually. I, exactly. <laughs> They're in my spirit. <laughs> so, uh, number five, Blake, you can go. Since you weren't here last week, you left. You had to leave early. Yeah. yeah you Close was your number one. My number, yeah, my number five would have been, I, I wish I was here last week for the top five. Event. No. <laughs> no. Did, you, did you listen to Doug's Beat Em and Eat Em Atari game? You should probably no. go back and hear that part. It's pretty disgusting. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. moving on. <laughs> I was listening to ourselves so I could self-critique, you know, and things that we go over. And then somebody called me um, narcissistic because I was listening to myself on the podcast. <laughs> Say, it's I'm not listening to myself. I'm listening stuck to with that. me ever since. So you haven't listened? <laughs> no, not for several episodes. But maybe I should go back. Was that your week? wife that was calling you narcissistic? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> no, but anyways, my number five. We talked about it briefly. I would be. I would like to be at the next. Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, Dungeons and Dragons, marketing and public relations meeting, <laughs> so I can yell and smack the shit out of all of them for fucking things up this past weekend. Uh, and can't. then announcing the movie after the convention. <laughs> can't like, argue with that one. I like that one. I like that one. And then I'll say, what was the hell you were thinking with fourth edition? Assholes. Fuckers. All right, go ahead. That's, that's it. No, you know, no, nothing bitter there. <laughs> Jeff, you go ahead. All right. Uh, my number five event I'd like to be at in person is uh, Essence Spiel. 
What is that? That is the world's largest gaming convention in Essen, Germany. Oh. Ooh, I thought it would be in regards to something to Oktoberfest. That you play during Oktoberfest. <laughs> I'm sure they're, drink, they're just drinking. <laughs> oh, okay. I, was well, ex- I don't know. I just feel it takes place in October. Maybe I'll just stop by Munich on my way. Maybe it does. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. I didn't think of Oktoberfest. I might have to change my list. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I missed Oktoberfest. I'm sorry for all our Deutsch friends out there. That's uh, instant honorable mention. Yes. I'll, instant, I'll throw that. Instant. Number, number one honorable mention. <laughs> I've been to Bavaria. I've been to Munich. I've been to München. I've, I've been to BMW Museum. I love that place. Oh, why didn't I think of not going to Oktoberfest? <laughs> one of my top fives. Uh, my number five? Is uh, in Houston, Kinky Renfest. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just I think kidding. I just deafened some listeners there. With Sorry. Remy LaCroix. Remy LaCroix. <laughs> I was kidding. Now Remy LaCroix ain't gonna come on the show. No, I said. You know, ever since Remy LaCroix and I spilled my beer. <laughs> what? What did you just say? He said Remy LaCroix ain't gonna come on this show. <laughs> Rated R on this one. Yeah. <laughs> we are explicit for a reason. I was going to say, ever since I spilled my beer after the Remy LaCroix stuff, oh, yeah. I smell like beer. It's pretty nasty over here. Oh my god. Are you done coming over there? Oh, okay, no. moving on. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? I don't know what's happening. Oh my god. We've lost control. <laughs> we are setting, we are drifting into the sun. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for everybody that came onto the show just to listen for the Gen Con, oh, <laughs> and you stayed. Uh, yeah, if, they're, if you're still around, then then you were enjoying this. Oh, uh, we're equal opportunity offenders. Uh, number five. Uh, I have <clears throat> it's an asterisk. San Diego Comic Con would be okay, but I think the amount of people is bugging me. I don't know if I could handle 150,000. So I'm going with New York City Comic Con. <clears throat> That would be kind of fun. It's a little bit smaller, still like fifty to sixty thousand, and more concentrated on comics than yeah. San Diego. So. I have an issue. I've said before. I refuse to stand in line at Hall H for eleven hours to see a trailer, which I'll see on the History of Bad Ideas podcast Facebook page uh, <laughs> within ten minutes. I have an issue with that. So I would like to see New York City Comic Con. I think it's more intimate, even though there's sixty thousand people, but <laughs> it's still I could handle that. Uh, my number four is the World Series. Preferably with the Reds or the Blue Jays, my two teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just game one game, the whole series. So I like to see the whole series, even though away games. I will say that uh, does touch my number three, but mine is specifically a Reds World Series. Oh, okay. So yeah, similar. A, it t- 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 touches one yeah. of mine, but I have to go into further detail for one of mine. Okay, well, hold on. Yeah. Oh, that was it. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, number four was worth it. Was Jeff number four? Uh, my number four is I would like to see a. Uh, Marvel movie premiere. Oh, be at okay. the red carpet, a whole big event for at the like, Chinese theater. Uh, whichever, wherever Hollywood? they want to do it. You know, sometimes they do it in other cities. I, was it something they just did? Oh, I don't remember. But they, they'll do it. In some sometimes the city they shoot it in. They'll, they'll have the premiere there. So it doesn't even have to be in L.A. Just the big event with all the celebrities of the film and. And I get to hobnob with them and watch could, a great film. Could you do DC? I could, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure I trust Marvel to put out a good product. And I would hate to be at one of those big premieres and not like the movie. I was going to try to start a hashtag of uh, hashtag Jeff or Hobie for oh. Aquaman. Oh, I was going to try to get you to Aquaman. Aquaman. I will do the premiere of Aquaman. Unfortunately, it's at the Jack's Pets and Aquarium or whatever it is. <laughs> That's Jack's fine Aquarium with me. Pets. <laughs> That's oh, that's what I have to do. We got a sucker fish. We we, we got to do an Indiegogo campaign to get uh, Hobie to uh, the premiere of Aquaman. Just one ticket is good. You. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> All by himself in the middle of the theater. <laughs> the premiere of Aquaman. Sitting right next to Jason Momoa because nobody else showed up. <laughs> and you'll be wearing your body tart with the Momoa, Jason Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> long hair. <laughs> long hair, your plastic trident. <laughs> My trident is better than yours, Jason. <laughs> uh, I killed a man with a trident. Uh, I mean, talk to you about that. <laughs> he may want to go south for a while. <laughs> Lay low. In the safe house. Go to South America. Uh, number four, Blake, for you? Uh, number four event. Um, 
it, this could be anywhere where I can get the best seat. Alaska, Iceland, or anything like that. I would like to see a full-blown Aurora Borealis. That's okay. Oh, that's Up by the North, like uh, North Pole Arctic Circle. My wife had that on her list. Yeah? That was one of her things. You yes. know why? Because she's awesome. She, well, she is. She yeah. is. Our yeah. wives are both pretty awesome. I will is. say that. You know. Yes. With high. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you got Aquaman, okay? <laughs> you got Jason Momoa in your body sock. <laughs> Fake tattoos, alright? Wait, but Jason Momoa's in his body sock? <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the oh. Kiki Red Fest. I know the Aquaman premiere at Kiki Red Fest. Oh, 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 wow. I should dress up as Aquaman for Kiki Red Fest. <laughs> Why are you going to kick you red fast? So I thought love. you were bringing me with you. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, but how do you think they would react if you show up dressed like Aquaman? Uh, they wouldn't care. No. Hey, they how kicky you. can you get? They'd welcome it. You know... For people who don't know what Kinky Ren Fest is, you have to go back several podcasts for that one, too. Or just Google it. You Google it. They follow us. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Where are, where are we Number at? three. Crikey. <laughs> Number three. Who's number three? You. you. Mine? Yes. All right. My number three. I got uh, my number three would be a World Cup final. I think it would be pretty cool to be at a World Cup final. Men's or women's? Doesn't matter. Either. Okay. Preferably women's because that's the only chance you have to winning a World Cup. I wouldn't mind being at a women's World Cup as much as a men's. I'd rather watch women's World Cup than, yeah. than a men's. That's right. Okay. Uh, uh, my Jeff? number three was World Series. For the Reds? For the Reds. Maybe the Mariners, because they're my second favorite team, if I had an opportunity to see a Mariners. Reds-Mariners World Series would be an awesome one to watch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't have anything with the Mar- against the Mariners. I'm rooting for Houston this year, though, the Astros. Did you pick Mariners what? because no of way. Aquaman? <laughs> I did not, but hey, well, I mean, yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. Oh, Jason Momoa, oh, get into this tube sock with me or whatever it is. No, you got to cheer for Kansas City, Jay. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that, too, because Johnny Cueto. Yep. Uh, and poor Mike Leake going to the San Francisco Giants. Hey, you got as much run score as the Reds did, gave you. He lost. He got the loss 2-1. to one. Yep. So, gave up a home run to Josh Hamilton, the ex-Red. He's not supposed to do that. Yeah. Uh, number two or number three for me. Uh, my wife to- had this one on there, and it was a good one. It would be fun to, for her and I to go do this Olympics. I'm not. We like watching the Olympics, but she said in a fun city, Rio de Janeiro would be a fun t- place to well, see. Well, it's coming up. As long as you don't go into the bad part of it. Did Rio. you or did you see mm-hmm. or swim in the fecal infested waters? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but did you see on uh, NPR? Not to get political. No. Uh, <laughs> on NPR, they were talking to p- scientists down yeah. there, and they're like. The uh, uh, Brazil is recommending that all the swimmers come to Brazil a year early to get immunity against this. <laughs> and the doctors are like, that's not going to work that's either. That's not how it works. No, because, and they said, give us a year. But, but I'd spend a year building up an immunity to iocane powder. Not the same as viruses <laughs> in the water. <laughs> and they said, we think we might be able to get the bacteria out of the water. The viruses will still be yeah, there. That's true. So, you know, you- Little would you think that you can get a, you know, uh, uh, little little did you think you could actually get a good movie reference like yours talking about Brazilian fecal water. That's right. <laughs> well, I still go back to the 60 Minutes interview they had with the uh, Brazilian government. I think it was the president down there when they were talking about the Olympics. They were like, you know, you're, you're four years away. This was in 2012. Yeah. You know, they say that you're not going to be ready. You know, your infrastructure's not ready. Your transportation. He's like, we'll be ready. No, I doubt it. We, you know, some countries go to law. Why go to war? We go to the beach. <laughs> and that was his interview. <laughs> and it's like, you're not going to be done. You, you kind of sounded like uh, the South Park S- Saddam Hussein. Ah, we'll be ready. Yeah, what are you doing, guy? <laughs> Shut it. Oh, I, that was a compliment. Oh, okay, well, I had a good I, I thought your Brazilian president it's or whatever. It's not good when I'm going for Brazilian and I go for Iraqi. <laughs> Iraqi via Colorado. You know, breast enhancements are state-sponsored surgeries in Brazil. Really? Yes. That would be nice. <laughs> Thank you. Gotta pay for your own Brazilian wax, though. No, oh, yeah. it gets you everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, number two. Uh, this is my nerd to me uh, for TV for this type of thing. TV upfronts. 
the upfronts that they have for the television critics, I would love to go to them. Get wine and dine by the critics. Realize 90% of what they're going to put on there is going Crap. to shit. Uh, but I, I get excited about the previews every year. You do. Every That's year. That's my thing excited. every year. So I would love to go to the TV upfronts. All so right. That's my number two. Uh, my number two is The Amazing Race. Oh, I didn't think about that. I want that. to be on The Amazing Race. I want Damn to it. cross the finish line first. Could we get on? Yeah. Uh, I would just be okay if we won two. Two legs. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Just get so one, each of get one of the Each one of us yeah. gets a, a, a vacation trip. somewhere yeah. else. I, I'm okay with that. All right. We'll have to get our video together then. Yes. Uh, Hobie for Amazing Race. Hashtag. Hashtag. Come on, people. Come on. Blake, you want to get into? <laughs> sure. I'd... You, I mean, get, yeah, you know, I watched you that do show. I, I watched that show and I was like, oh, You need to get Blake and the Dip Man together. Oh, yeah, Blake yeah, and the Dip Man. Yeah, Dip Man. I, I watched that show and I was like, I could win this shit. I like. Uh, I've, been, I've been enough of weird you speak, places. I you can get speak out of this stuff. Foreign yeah. languages and yeah. no foreign cultures. The big thing is you cannot argue with your partner. No. You need to, you need to have. Okay, this yeah. is what you want. Then we're going That's to do right. it, even Boom. if it fucks it up. You're like, yeah. it's okay. Don't worry about. It. Let's just get through yeah. it. Yeah. Everybody we'll, that we'll bitches, we make loses. a decision. We make a decision. Yeah. We stick with the decision. Uh, if we have to change, we turn around. We go, but we don't point fingers and nope sh- and fault somebody else if they have a bad decision was made. You you live with it and then move on. Even if you get eliminated first, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. You're going to a, a resort, an all inclusive yeah. resort for three weeks. That's how they do it because they yeah. don't send you back home. You yeah, have to go to you a gotta go sequester yeah. yourself. Yeah, you okay, yourself. you get sequestered so you can then show up at the uh, finish line to. So clap you the either you want to finish first or last. Or or last. last. <laughs> I'll take the trips around the world. I would want to just go to these places that I would never be able to afford. Mm-hmm. To go I would, on just, my yeah, own. I would do the experience. Yeah. yeah. And my no issue, no offense to India. I would not want to go to India, and I know like it would be like <laughs> first trip India. Nope, I'm out. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't drink the water. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, the water. I definitely couldn't be uh, partnered up with my father-in-law. You think? Know, because when my in-law family and everybody came over to Italy, and I went to show them over over Italy. Yeah, we almost had a couple throwdowns. <laughs> it wasn't good. I heard he knows what like a glory you and him or him and other people. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Did you show where all those in Italy <laughs> I have to go back several episodes for that one when I talked about another one of my stories. But anyways, yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. What's your number two? One? Oh, two. you have to go to Blake for two. And one. Oh, my oh, number two. My number two, if it ever happens again, if they ever... I want to be in the, uh, you know, the backlit, you know, shadow in the front row of the next Mystery Science Theater 3000 oh, movie. Oh. I think it'd be fun if I could sit up in front and make... Smart snarky so comments. So you're sitting next to so I'm sitting Crow next to, and yeah, uh, exactly. Tom Servo. Do you know Tom Servo and the bots and the uh, the, th- like, the Mike uh, and the two guys that do their voices. Yeah, they do a uh, new movie or they do a movie in the theaters. You can buy tickets. They simulcast it throughout the theaters. Did you know uh, that? No, I did not know. Yes, that. they simulcast. Yes, they just uh, make comments on the spot. Yeah. And uh, oh, on the spot, they don't write them ahead of time. Well, they probably do, oh, but okay. uh, they're doing Sharknado. One of the Sharknado oh, no. movies oh. at the theater. So if you guys are interested, I keep wanting to do it. It just fell on bad days. They did Godzilla, the Matthew Broderick one, and I wanted to I see it. I remember you talking about that. Yeah, the problem is they're always done on like weekdays and, you know. That were so busy t- or something. Yeah, t- times when the theater is not going to be busy yeah. to try to bring it. I'll let you know in the next that. one. They do it four times a year, four or five times a year. I will do that. Okay. I will do that. Let me know. Rope? Robot yeah. roll call. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Was it last episode? Or yes. Two episodes ago, when you talked about Pluto TV mm-hmm. and talked about the Mystery Science Theater channel. Yeah. Jason's wife did not know what Mystery Science Theater was. She found out and does not like it and what? does not understand. And Jeff and Carolyn, uh, Jeff and his sister came over the one time, and uh, she was hoping to get like support from his sister, and she and her, his sister was like, "No, I love Mystery Science Theater." And my <laughs> wife's like, oh. and then we started singing the theme song. <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, move on. Uh, what's your number one, Jeff Blake? Whoever name is, I don't yeah, know. whoever you are, sitting across from me. Yes, yeah. My number one is a purely fictional event. It's a tie. Mm-hmm. Between two purely fictional events. Yes. And I know it'll never happen in my lifetime. Remy LaCroix going legit no. actress? No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. It'll be a Cleveland Browns Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 
with Johnny, or, with Johnny or Football. Or Cleveland Indians World Series victory. I'm not against that. I'm, I'll root for the Indians. Yeah. I like them. Corey Schneider, Joe Carter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I won't root for the Indians. Unless they're playing somebody that I... The Marlins. No, I'll see. My Indians are my American League team. The Reds are my national. Did it break your heart when they lost to the Marlins? Did it break your heart? Oh, that's a Blake story. (laughs) Do that next week. For another day. (laughs) Yeah. I I actually saw that in La Maddalena, Italy. Okay, hold on. I'm writing it down for next week. Marlins, Indians, Blake story. There's a lot of history to that. Not just me, but just to the Game 7 all in all. Well, you have a week. Actually, we should have Bednar in there for that, because he could give you all the facts right off the top of his head, because he's got them all fucking memorized. Okay, so next, Jeff, what's your number one? My number one, I would like to be at the Jeopardy $100,000 Tournament of Champions. As a spectator or in it? Oh, in it. Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. I, I want to be winning the one hundred thousand dollar tournament of champions. Pro- probably could, but you're probably an eighth of a second too slow to ring in. Two tenths of a second, whatever. Jason. Two tenths of hey, a he second. He throws lifeline to a guy dressed like Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> Call the yeah. sheriff. Call the sheriff. You, 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 you don't get lifelines in Jeopardy. Jeff, did you know that Jeff was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I did not know that he was. Well, back in the old days when they had the fastest finger where you had to ring in, I didn't yeah. actually get into the hot seat. No, we're not joking. He really did. Oh, awesome. Yeah. He I, was the uh, fastest finger. I thing. lost by two tenths of a second. To uh, get into the hot seat. To someone who didn't know that a sockeye was a salmon fish. You're not, <laughs> you're not bitter, though. <laughs> no, I'm not bitter at all. Not bitter at all. If you can find Jeff now on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you put that link on our Facebook page, we will send you a prize. I'm not kidding. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. You're going to send him your Mr. Fisto? Fisto! <laughs> um, <laughs> if you had that type of fist, you probably could have chimed in quicker. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> I'm in. Uh, number one for me. Now, this is kind of a asterisk because I have been to one. I would like, I'll have a clarification here. I want the front row that you can see everything. And when the camera shows the the ring, I'm right behind everybody. And you're, you can Wrestling. see me. WrestleMania front row in the middle of this, uh, right behind everything. Those seats are about $1,500 each. I would love to do that. But you do get the chair with you. You get to take the chair with you. You get the chair with you? Yes, you do. Do you get to hit somebody over the head with it? I'm sure. I awesome. could do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> In the parking lot. But yeah, it's uh, 1500 to. They can go up to, to thousands more. But yeah. it's the very front row, dead center, uh, of the right behind the back of the uh, ring. So The, the, the part that is always on camera? Yes. You want just to- because, not that narcissistic right there. I just want to be the guy like, yeah! You want to be holding the great signs that... Or people- dressing up like, you know, Roddy Piper. Uh, so, yeah, I've been to WrestleMania. was at WrestleMania 25 in Houston. Um, but I want to be front row. And I said that to my wife, and she's like, really? I was like, yeah, I would love to do that again. She's like, oh, okay. So maybe, maybe she has maybe, something. Maybe she's going to play. I don't know where the $1,500 is going to come from, but, you know, maybe somewhere. Someday. Yeah. Uh, so that's my number one. Uh, anybody have any honorable mentions? I got an honorable mention. Of course nobody, you do. Uh, nobody would want to be at this event. It's called the end of the world. As we know it, it's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> and good, good. I feel fine. fine. Good thing you are nowhere close to the right tune because we have no problems on... <laughs> you want to be there like... I don't think anybody would want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're like 90, 90 and you lived a good life. I don't know. They're the uh, yeah, sequel screw to everybody at that point. I'm going. <laughs> everybody can go to uh, the, the, the sequel to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was the restaurant at the end of the universe. Yeah, where you went through time and you got to watch the end of the universe while sitting in the nice little restaurant. Did so the, uni- did the restaurant blow up? Uh, I think you got out of there before it blew up, and then the next group of people came in. I oh. don't know. Yeah. It, that time travel stuff never makes sense. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, you know I, I just added a new honorable mention. That would have been, uh, you know, the uh, Adult Video Awards with Remy LaCroix. Oh! <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Blake for AVN. <laughs> <laughs> or was it? AVP? P. No. <laughs> 
What? What? AFB, <laughs> America's Funniest People, or a video? <laughs> AVN? AVN, yeah, whatever. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> we did get a lot of uh, feedback. We'll go through these real quick. Bobby we did H? get a lot of feedback. On Appreciate that. everybody. Thanks for yeah, writing thanks. in. thanks. Uh, we got a lot of new people, too. Bobby H. had a uh, Jimmy Buffett yeah. concert. Yeah, bring up the level of quality on the show. <laughs> uh, number four, ESPN War Room League Draft. Uh, I would do NFL Network. Ooh. I would rather do the NFL. Like, be like, be, like being your NFL draft room. Yeah. That the would war be cool. room during yeah. draft. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, number three, Super Bowl. See, I like those. I like football. Even if the Bengals were in it, I don't even know if I would want to do the Super Bowl. And my wife said again tonight, yeah. she's like, why? And I was like, because for a week when I'm at yeah. the Super Bowl beforehand, I would be a nervous wreck. Like, how the fuck are they going to blow this? My pessimistic yeah. attitude. Oh, my God, how the fuck are the Bengals going to blow this? Uh, don't be the, embarrassed. Super Bowl is just so much other shit and pageantry and all that. It takes away from the football, too. Personally, I think I would probably be arrested, too, for uh, punching the commissioner. So that would be it, too. Uh, You're yeah. a douche. Bam! You'd be running on the field. <sighs> Uh, number two, the Cannes Film Festival. So I've been there. The film festival? Yeah. How was it? Uh, it was all right, but you got to be like have a lot of connections to get in a lot of the good stuff there. So we just spent a lot of time walking around, and I had, so this, I had this oversized red sweater, and I was on vacation. And I was on leave, so I let the stubble grow out, and I had a little bit of hair. So I had my John Lennon glasses. Fit in with the French. Somebody started following me and a group started following me because they thought I was Liam Gallagher from Oasis. <laughs> from Oasis. Oh! <laughs> Did you start giving autographs? I would have. No, <laughs> actually somebody said something to laugh and it asked me a question and I just started laughing. I'm like, no. Oh, yeah. you should have played the I should have played it. Well, I would have been exposed pretty quick. Hey, who cares? Well, <laughs> you're exposed, huh? Yeah, yeah I'm, oh. no, I'm no Liam. No. Nobody should be. Yeah. <laughs> you're more of a Noel. I think I'm a Noel. <laughs> And now that I'm older, I look more like a Noel, Noel Gallagher than Liam. Better or worse than Savage Garden? I'm sorry. Uh, they are worse than Savage Garden. <laughs> huh? What? No. Oasis is awesome. What are you talking about? Uh, Anyways, go ahead. Number one, Sandy. Well, except for all the songs they do. <laughs> well, Besides, whatever. Except for all of them. San Diego Comic Con is number one. Uh, he Radio said, Comic-Con. honorable mention, NCAA Men's Basketball Final Four and a recording of Hobie Podcast Live. We have gotten five requests for our Hobie Live Podcast. When you come out, to, you can come out, Paranormal Fest, first Saturday in October. October, We are the hey. guest judges at the costume contest. <laughs> <laughs> Not after this episode. <laughs> No, we're okay. Morris doesn't listen to that because oh, he's not on. And <laughs> but he listened to last week's episode. <laughs> Please don't listen to this morning. And number two, we'll be doing a live podcast from that. So, uh, Randall Holt had at RJ Holt 666, Ghost Hunting was number five. Uh, I'm probably with the Ghost Hunters. Uh, number four, Super Bowl. Number three, some event in Hawaii. Well, I can't go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever <laughs> event it is, but it has to be in Hawaii. Uh, number two, Winter Olympics. Don't lose your tiki idol in Hawaii. I like it specifically Winter <laughs> Olympics. Uh, yeah. I think he wants to see the curling. Oh, I like to see bobsled. <laughs> uh, and number one, any Iron Maiden show. I can agree with him on that. Uh, let's see one here. Two of the hills. Doctor number one, I think he's uh, he's got. Uh, <laughs> Number one's getting uh, a little political here. Uh, number five, Chris Berman's funeral. Well, I do agree with that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Hey. I can agree with that. Chris Berman's all right. No. We don't uh, conduct. What? what? No. He's all right. No, he's not. Why don't you take Berman Oasis and get the fuck out? All right. <laughs> number four, Obama's impeachment. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> number th- two, three, Trump's inauguration. <laughs> oh, God. Help us all. <laughs> Number two, when Babs from Culture Babble gets my face tattooed on her body. <laughs> <laughs> And number one, sit in and record a podcast with Hobie. There you go. Wow. So uh, that was a good one. Uh, five, yeah. but well, he's, he's actually seen the podcast. Yeah. He, he just, just can't come in. <laughs> uh, number five, or Firefly Podcast. At Firefly Podcast, they've never written to us before. Oh, there's cool. a Firefly Podcast, yeah. All right. Oh, wow. Uh, five Oktoberfest in Germany. They thought of it. Yeah, yeah because they're smart. <laughs> Number four, San Diego Comic Con. Three was Geekly Con. I don't know what that is. Uh, we'll have to look that up. Yeah. Two is Bilderberg meeting. I don't know what that is. What's the Bilderberg meeting? I have no Bilderberg idea. Google well, it. And number one, Black Sabbath concert with the original guys. So that was... Uh, that yeah, was... they're going on tour again, but they're not bringing back the original drummer because they, w- they didn't want to pay him. 
Is that the reason? I think that was the reason. He wanted too much money? Wow. Uh, you and would then, think at this point in time, why not? Why, why are you going to argue about money if you're 60 years old and you want to go on tour again and have them oh. relive all those memories? The uh, Bilderberg Group slash conference slash meeting slash club is an annual private conference of about 120 to 150 political leaders and experts from industry, finance, academia, and the media established in 1954. About two-thirds of the participants come from Europe and the rest from North America. One third of the politicians and government from the rest of the other fields. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, look at you being smart. Yeah, look <laughs> at that. Man. Now, is that anything like the uh, episode from last week's True Detective? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But, anyways, okay, go ahead. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Saunders. It's right up Remy LaCroix Avenue. <laughs> We gotta get this something. done. <laughs> uh, Chris Saunders, uh, I like to have seen the epic showdown between Freddy versus Jason at, at the camp in person. But you know, I would be invisible, so they don't want to kill me. I obviously was not clear enough on what I. <laughs> 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 and then when I told him about it, he said, "Fine, I would have liked to see the filming of that scene in person, <laughs> yeah, and go. I would not be invisible then." <laughs> there you go. He, Heno, your pod lover. Yeah, Heno. Uh, number five, him win the uh, po- uh, Powerball lottery. Uh, that's a good one. I yeah, like it. good one. Yeah, right. that'd be an honorable mention on my list. New Year's fireworks over Sydney Harbor. That would be cool. My wife said uh, hers would be uh, the dropping of the ball at Times Square. Yeah. Oh, too crowded. That's what I said. I've been there. Couldn't do it. Uh, number three. I've been there for New Year's. For New Year's? There was a, uh, a, a period of time I was jet setting for different New Year's around the world. Toledo, Ohio. That's no. beautiful. That's no, a great Toledo, New Ohio. Year. Great yeah. New Year. <laughs> Shit. Uh, a Super Bowl. Uh, number two, the Star Wars 7 premiere in L.A. And number one, Alec Baldwin crossing into Canada like he always threatens he will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, De- Devin, how do you say his last name? Fother? Fother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ronda Rousey kicking the shit out of Coria in 34 seconds from ringside. Only if it was free, because I would feel cheated if I had to pay. The premiere of Star Wars, episode number four, A New Hope, because why not? Oh, we're time traveling now. There probably wouldn't be a lot of people there. You'd have a good seat. (laughs) All the greatest scientific discoveries as they were happening. That's a lot of... So you're Mr. Peabody now. (laughs) You got your Sherman? Yeah. Peabody and Sherman, yeah. Travis. Travis is a Sherman. His boy. Uh, his boy. Uh, his boy Sherman. The first animal to walk on land? <laughs> and then it was eat him. It wasn't an animal. Yeah. It was a uh, reptile. A live recording Reptiles of... Reptiles are animals? Sure. A live <laughs> recording of Hobie uh, is number one. Kevin Holland at uh, 365 Felix Podcast. Moment George Lucas thought up Jar Jar uh, Banks, and then I would slap him so hard I would actually slap the idea out of his head. Uh, nope. JFK assassination, and I have a view from the grassy knoll. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Ow, first that's episode. Pretty disturbing. <laughs> Back to the first episode. Re- but actually, you know, that's pretty smart. You actually see if he acted alone or not. Uh, or you could be in the movie The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. He found out who killed him at the yeah. end. Uh, back to the first episode, uh, we recorded a 365 podcast and uh, when we say, oh, and I would say, don't worry, you will get better. Uh, we would say that about Hobie. <laughs> the moment everyone says, holy shit, Affleck was awesome as Batfleck. Batfleck. <laughs> and number one, I'm with Devin on this, a Hobie recording. <laughs> and that got three likes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and I, I think that was all so loved. So there's uh there you go. So if you have any more, send them on in. Uh, that was a popular one. So yeah, we got a thanks lot of for feedback on that from one day. Yeah, awesome. for four sure, hours. Less, yeah, less than a day. Uh, bad idea. I don't have one. Um, I did not think of one. Anybody? Bad idea. I'll give you a, a bad oh, idea. Here we go. Being a marketing or public relations person <laughs> oh. for Wizard of the Coast, Hasbro, Dungeons and Dragons, and fucking up Gen Con. What number? That's number, probably, probably well, about 30. It can't be number one because we have a number one that we will only yes. do on our last episode oh, ever. Oh, it would have been a top 10 for me. Number 10. You want to do 10? Ooh. I think, I think we've done a 10 before. 10 I think point. we've done many multiple numbers, <laughs> Todd. 10 A. Okay. 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 10 A. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's your. Uh, I don't even know what this was. Uh, <laughs> it was episode 83. It was of episode 83. Bad ideas. Uh, sponsored by Remy LaCroix. Right? It's always the penultimate. <laughs> <laughs> There's always money in uh, banana stands. Banana stands, right. Uh, Roger says goodbye. 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 Walking dead to talking heads. From comic books to TV sets. There's a history of not so bad. There's the history.
history It's the history of bad So bad The history of bad It's bad The history of bad ideas Podcast You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network Stay geeky, my friends.